Good evening, good evening, good evening. All, good, good day, good morning <laughs> to all my fans. We are back again for season two, second podcast. And it's called First Week Report of the ATP WTA. We're giving you all the live tidbits and news and results from the first week of 2016. But before we go anywhere, let me introduce my hostess with the mostest. I am nothing without these ladies. And I'm going to start in reverse order. I'm going to start with Karen Britry on the spin. Hi, good evening, everybody. Janina, you have to be second again, unfortunately. Um, from I like the middle. Oh. <laughs> Oh, foreign cars, are they? And last but certainly not least, Andreen from Solely Tennis Travel. Hello. Hey, ladies. Last week, how are you to this week? Great. Last I'm feeling week, better. We so, uh, okay, but we weren't so enthusiastic about the before tennis started, but for the first week. What would you have to say? Are we enthusiastic? Are we liking what we see so far for 2016? Everyone dropping like flies? It's great. I like what I saw. Okay. I, I like what I saw. You know? I, I am indifferent. But you know what? Let's just get with the results. So, we're going to start We're gonna start with the ladies' results or the men's results? What are you going to start with? Okay. Um, well... Karen, you start with the ladies. Over in, um, let's start in the Far East and go to Shenzhen um, because the, the number one topic is no doubt going to be the return of he, she who shall not be named. Um, <laughs> Lady um, Baltimore is in town. <laughs> yeah, we had um, Agarad Wanska picking up title number 18 over in Shenzhen. Um, beating um, Alison Risk, of all yeah. people. Um, and she got there, um, Petra Kidova, as usual, pulling out. Um, <laughs> and we have to talk about the, the Czech and their penchant for, you know, gastrointestinal stuff, but that's further on in the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's going to be further down. Um, Sloan Stevens, oh, two Bobby, from two. Go. Hey, hey. Sloan hey, Stevens. Sloan Ronald Stevens, Ryan. yeah, um, Sloan Stevens, this era's Anna Chak um, <laughs> win, winning titles and taking names. I ain't oh, hating on you, girl. She put on a dominating performance. Um, and it's not even dominating so much as focused, very, very focused, clean hitting, um, and we'll expand on that later on in the show. And... Uh, Comeback kid extraordinaire, first title in three years, Victoria Azarenka, winning Brisbane yeah. in dominant fashion, dropping I am not 17 impressed. games. Whatever. We're going to expand on that as well <laughs> later on in the show. But um, taking each tournament in stride, none of us saw Shenzhen, did we? Nope. No. I actually so, did. I don't even oh, know where that did? is. You want to tell I me did. where that is? <laughs> Where the hell is the Shenzhen? Somewhere, somewhere in the South China Sea. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost sure I watched in Shenzhen. I did watch some match, but, you know. That's because you don't sleep. Yeah, that's that's very true. I don't... I, 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 at any point in time I wake up, I feel something. Get off the guard. Get off the guard. I am a professional, okay? Oh, my God. I, I thought I was the one who didn't sleep. Professional, no, okay. You know what? You know what? Never sleeps. I'm like, oh. <laughs> let us go to the men's side now. I'm just say, okay. On yeah, the go men's on to side the now. Okay. I don't even know whether to bring the good news, the bad news, all the news, know. all the news. Okay, so let's start with the least significant. No tea, no shade. We gotta go to ATP Chennai. I mean. Bad. That's kind bad. of like a big deal. No surprise it here. Is. Stanley Varenka took his Chennai crown. Okay, For like the third year in a row, right? I mean, like, good. look, not many things are sure in Stanley's career, but he's sure to get Chennai. Okay, awesome. so let's give him a round of applause and for that. And Beat it, beat it, Bona Church. You know, which is I think it was seven five six two seven five something along that line, or seven five six four. 
Um, Who knows? I can check right now, but you know, um, happy congratulations to Bona Chorich to get into his first ATP finals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he played a pretty solid um, semifinals, which I thought was a very interesting and wonderful contest between him and I think it's Al J. Bedene. Yeah. Like that. Anyway, yes. I said the that final pretty, score you know, was 6 3 six, 7 three, five. Seven, five. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. And then we had ATP Doha. Um, <laughs> oh boy, you can't even take that with a straight face. No. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't see one point of the Doha final. Oh, man, that score line. God. Okay. It you know what? Apparently, Tennis Channel didn't want us to see it either because Tennis Channel was like, you know what? Is there a final between Rafa and Novak? Should yeah. we show it? No. They didn't even <laughs> play it, did they? Um, I mean, if because I kind of tried to catch it. I didn't make much of an effort, but... There was nowhere yeah. to be found on so, I, I, we, we will talk about that more in there, but you know, let's just say, you know, no surprise, hey, you know, the most dominant man in all of men tennis, which they would probably tell us over and over again, <laughs> dished out a breadstick and a two-piece and a biscuit for Diva Dow. I don't think one, he got a biscuit. Two. I don't even well, think Well, I like to call a six to four line, a two-piece and a biscuit, okay? That's what it is, a breadstick and a two-piece combo. I okay. mean, it was the two in over an hour. Special. Okay, good deal. Yes, look, I'm telling you, uh, people might not like it, but I'm just going to say this. Um, Nola was generous. <laughs> it could have it, it, it been six love, six love. It could have been. Uh, well, was, kind of in the New Year is good yeah. for Nola. Poor Rafa. I'm telling you, people just, uh, for, for Diva Dow fans and for men tennis fans, let's just hope. Djokovic peaked in Doha. Let's just <laughs> honestly, yeah, I'm just he peaked too soon. <laughs> It'll be like the opposite of last year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully he has a Ferrer type of year from last year. Uh oh, uh, Ferrer. Ferrer was the defending <laughs> champion. Went out what? Second round? And last but well, not last, but you know, uh, ATP Brisbane, you know, um mm -hmm. congratulations to Noah. And congratulations to Stanley. I am a judicious hater, people, so just know it, okay? I give out, you know, give Jack the jacket. ATP Brisbane, well, um, mm, crickets again. Stop <laughs> it. Milo Speed Federer. I mean, like, there's just no way around it. Uh, we could talk and about I'm that. And I'm actually later. quite proud of that. I uh, yes, that. I, I I'm am proud of that. I mean, like, I really can't hate on Milo's game, but I can hate on his speech, which we'll get on to <laughs> later. But, you know, um, he beat Federer 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. I watched a lot of ATP Brisbane. I, I watched a lot of tennis, you know. That is true. I didn't speak much. But, you know, he played pretty solidly. Actually, I think he played better in the finals than he did in the semifinals. Um, but it was a pretty... I was very impressed with Milos, Milos all week long. Um, solid performance, and he definitely deserved the win today. So 6-4, six, 6-4 four, six, four with Federer. Congrats. And no tea, no shade. You did it in front of your former coach who's now coaching your opponent, and that's a little extra, you know what I mean? We got to give an extra toot that's for that. That's an extra incentive, no doubt. Extra toot for that, boo. I mean, I'm not going to hate on you for that. And last but not least, but, you know, last but certainly least, which is kind of significant, Hotman Cup happened. And before we get into the real tea, because that's what I deal with Hotman Cup and just get it done over. These are a lot of things that you need to know about Hotman Cup. First thing, Serena and Murphy's pulled out. So that just totally just... Brought that that event down to the cool the cool the cool thing cut the right cool in half exactly the cool people were not there okay? especially <laughs> if you're not a fan of Nick Kyrgios okay <laughs> let me just say that and Hotman Cup I just gotta just say I don't understand how the defending champion Poland were not present but you asked me I got two teams I don't get it a green and a green team look. I ain't trying to start any trouble here, but I think perhaps you know someone should do an internal audit of Tennis Australia, because to me, yeah, just put in late and here order to get more money. I don't understand. <laughs> you know what? That was the first time they had won Hotman Cup apparently in 16 years. 17. Look, exactly. Was it 17? 17. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, when um, the last time Australian people won Hotman Cup, um, Kyrgios and whoever his partner was were Got toddlers. Over. Yeah, they well, were toddlers. I'm telling you. Yeah. They had you know no what? Idea. You know what the Australians have learned. Thank God for immigrants. Anywho, 
Ah! Oh, and as we're on that subject too, Don Fraser, I think you wouldn't want to send these people back home just yet, right? Just check it, right? Because right? they made Australia proud today. Oh, right? There you okay. go. They're, so, they're awesome um, today. I think it was. I think it was the green team, Australia Green. I think Gold. it was. Australia Gold. Green. No, no, no. Goal was. Um, oh yeah. Oh, it's green. Yeah. Thing, yeah. You know, Sorry. Yamila Guider, so former Yamila Grass is now Yamila Wolf. Uh, oh yeah. Wolf. Yeah. I was a little bit confused. I was just like, who the fuck is this Wolf girl? I know everybody. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't yet. recognize her. Who is she? Who is she? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, girlfriend got married. Congratulations, girl. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna hate on you because you left Sam alone. So Sam Grass is all mine now. So thank you. Congratulations on your new wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be trying to go any take back seas balloon. We're not here for that. And the other thing you need to know, so Australia Green won, and the other thing you need to know is that Murray and Nick Curious are standing on a bromance. I think was that a couple we had uh, initiated last week in our bromance. Yeah, no, whatever. No, but, oh, but it was Nick, not. But so Nick we is got... on it hard. He's on it hard. Okay, yes. He's yes, selling that yes. bromance like nobody's business. Yes, yeah, so we might see the start of something here. Something happened down in Perth, okay? <laughs> you know, Murray uh -oh. getting all perky, and you know. I think you would call it a secret bromance, a solid bromance, something like that. Oh, he said not so secret, so. Oh, yes, a not so secret bromance. Well, all righty well, then. You know, you know. Even Billy agrees with you. <laughs> okay, so. Well, yeah, I so think we, it's important that Nick beat Murray, you know? Yes, I think it was definitely hard fought. I'm not going to be shady and say, you know, allegedly Mari was injured. But, you know, it was a hard fought um, win for Australia Green all throughout the tournament. They beat Ukraine, just Ukraine. Ukraine didn't have a green, blue, or yellow. It was just Ukraine. Um, only Australia decided to know my color. And it was Spitolina and Dolga Polov. And uh, Sidovina so is now in Nike now, so she switched up and looked. Can I Better? just say, I just hope that um, Heather Watson didn't peak too soon. She played some pretty fantastic matches. Yes, she so did. But you know what? She didn't play some pretty counter. fantastic opponents. No, and I think uh, uh, Lissiki is, a compa is, a, is, is fine enough a component. An opponent, no? <laughs> I mean, generally, Lissiki, no, I mean, no, it's no. hardcore, it's not grass. Lissiki is a potentially good opponent. Lissiki <laughs> is, the, is the person that you laugh at because you know she's going to take out the French Open champion. That you <laughs> <laughs> she's just a one-time hit know. assassin, okay? Like, you just send her out, you know, like... Just well, you know, I just saw that, I, I saw that Heather had a really great match that all the WTA were congratulating her against, on. Um, I did see that match against Gabriel. Over, I think it was. That's not a and that's not a that's not a joke. I think that they're they're compelling. They're somewhat similar age groupish. Right. It's, I mean, it's it, a good competition it, for them. Right. I mean, like it's one of those you know those matches in WTA, you know, just long and everybody say it's epic. But you know, I think it <laughs> well, was. Well, people were enjoying it. <laughs> yes, I think it was definitely the fans were enjoying it. There were a lot yeah. of um, people from Guernsey. I think that's where she's from. Mm. Moved to Australia, mm. and they were all down in Perth, and plus the crowd, home crowd for Australia That's Green, nice. I think it was. So it was definitely crowd fantastic, and you know there was Murray, and then they came back later on for the mixed doubles. So it was pretty good. Um, it was a pretty interesting match, you know. I would say that much. But anyway, that's all you need to know about Hotman Cup people. My and Heather Watson is that Heather Watson, you know, because Laura Watson, Watson seems to have disappeared from the it girl. Of tennis, yeah. the British tennis. That's okay. Because of her performance against Serena at Wimbledon last year. Hopefully, we'll see it, get to see and hear a lot more about Heather Watson. This year, yes, I hope so too. Yeah, because she is likable and she is she has a very nice personality and she's very relatable. I think, like you know, she's very, you know, marketable. I guess is what we can use. Um, and I, so I'm, if if you remember correctly, I saw her sitting and eating at a Chinese buffet. So she's clearly not big on herself. Oh, okay, so that's well, good. Yeah. <laughs> I know to eat, you know. Uh, I could listen to Heather Watson speak all day. Yeah, she's yeah. lovely. Yeah, she, you know, like, girl, you know. Accents. Step your game up, girl, so we can see more of you, okay? We don't want to be losing you in qualification. Just saying, you know. And just slow your roll when well, you Well, she quit. has a new coaching relationship, right? She's been uh, temporarily with um, Judy Murray. So let's see what Judy Murray can do oh, for her. Oh, okay. 
All righty then. So that's enough about Hotman Kevin. It ain't real, people. It ain't real. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> you are such a hot mink up hater. I'm okay. Wait a minute. Stop right now. Okay. We are like five minutes in, and you have hit that gong about twenty five. Because oh, you know what, you people are trying to come for me. You know, you gotta come I'm coming for me, for me right now. Lay no, off. No, no. The <laughs> I gotta put you on timeout, Janina. Like third hey, time. guess what? It's you and that new mic, isn't it? You know, oh, coming yeah. out to sexy and full of yourself. So, risky. let us get to the matches that we did watch. Let's talk about the ladies' matches. And, you know, I mean, I guess the, the burning story on the WTA, actually, it's two burning stories. Um, I guess, let's talk about the non-tennis that actually happened that became the burning story on the WTA. Well, Garbine? talk about the matches. Like, People We're talking about the matches. We're talking about the matches. Oh, the matches. Okay, the matches. Okay, the matches. okay. So let me just, you know, I know everyone is going on about, I know Karen went on about Vika's emphatic. Um, she was, she, she played a really good match. She Karen, I, you know, match. Karen, I'm, hold on one second, Karen. Your tone is kind of low. Can you increase oh, the volume? Let me, let, me put the, let me put the mic up to my, my mouth. I yeah, that's okay. usually a good idea. Yeah. Um, no, I, was, <laughs> I was having dinner. I just finished having dinner. Oh, okay. Of course. I, somebody needs to tell me how to cook a rack of lamb properly. So, mm, yeah, I don't eat lamb, lamb, but you know. We can totally have a cooking podcast, but it's not going to be today. So, Vika, yes. Um, early in, earlier in the week, she didn't look that good. Um, service, to, frankly, her service is still iffy. Um, her movement is not 100% just yet. Um, she still has a little bit of fitness issues as, as far as I could see. But her mind focused. Yeah, her mind is her mind is she's fully engaged when she's playing, which is to me the most important aspect of Azarenka's game. She knew what her game plan was against every single opponent. And I didn't see every single match, but those that I did miss, I made sure I went back and looked at highlights and everything. Her match against um Samantha Crawford, who is being hyped to the heavens. Um was good. She was clinical. You could tell that she had done her homework. She knew that person, what she had done in the previous round. And so she came out focused and ready to take names. I like what I saw. Um, I don't know if she's going to be playing Sydney. If she is planning on playing Sydney, she needs to withdraw. Um, she had a bit of a moment with her left foot um, in her match against Kerber. And, um, and I think if anything, and she wants to at least compete and be in the conversation at the Australian Open, then she needs to take a break and ensure that that left foot is looked at. Well, um, apparently she's already in the conversation for the Australian Open. I heard Lindsay Davenport say that she is now the number two favorite behind Serena, who we haven't even really seen play. It's all very interesting. Well, listen, well that's, that's the way how tennis works. That's tennis bullshit. Works in the here and now. I mean, well, I mean, you know, I, I think it's, could fall it's in the first fair. Round. It's fair because I mean, she's won it's fair before. given the she's state, won it twice yeah. Before, yeah. And it's given the state of the WTA. It's not. Just, I mean, it's it's a combination, right? It's right. a combination of Azarenka and it's a combination of all the names that you are supposed to think will survive. They're yes. all dubious. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I don't actually see Azarenka on the draw in um in Sydney. So okay. I don't think she she was she's not on the draw, so she hasn't pulled out. Oh, she okay. was never entered. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, so, you know. Listen, I thought it was a nice return to Azarenka, but realistically what it really demonstrated to me was that it was her fitness all along. It was her fitness it, to me. Yeah, I didn't think she added I any agree. flavor. It was a return to the Azarenka that we know. I mean, a little bit of the net approaches that she, she did on her run to the Australian Open in 2012, which she kind of seemed to abandon later. Um, but... Because she did do that. She came in and ended a lot of shots when she needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe the reason why she hadn't been doing that was because she was somewhat compromised physically. She, she, she played like somebody who was in good shape, and she looked like someone in good shape. So for the first yeah. time, those two things met. <laughs> well, you know, you're not yeah, supposed to I, 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 I love, I, <laughs> but I love her. But the problem that I have with... Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead. Karen. Which probably, you know, you're right, um, J um, Andrew, about her fitness and her, and you know, but I think 
the fitness and the game being where she wants it to be. Mm-hmm. You know, frankly, like I said, I don't think she's 100%, mm-hmm. but she's where she's comfortable with mm-hmm. what her body's telling her. And as a result, her mind and her focus, you know, to execute. It's clearer. It's clearer and the way how she executed because, you know, even when she got broken, there was no rolling eyes and looking up to the heavens or anything. It was all about, okay, fine, I got broken. It could be that in fact she had a 5-0 and record against um, Kerber. Kerber. Oh, she's never Kerber. lost. The only, the only actually, she has an amazing record against lefty except Kvitova, and the only other lefty that's beaten her is just recently last year was um, Safarova, Safashova, whatever the yeah. case may be. So she's very comfortable against lefties. And I think that, has, that, that happens because she's such an excellent returner. She's very good at returning serve. And she, she basically... You know, she she cramped Kerber's style of play. It just plays right into what she has to do because even though she was hitting hard and heavy off the ground and everything like that, she was able to push Kerber back and take Kerber out of her comfort zone, which made Kerber start playing a style of tennis I've never seen her play. This aggressive form of tennis she was she was she herself. And you know, while we talk about Azarenka, let's for a minute talk about Kerber and how she had been playing. She was very effective moving forward. And she's lost a ton load of weight. She's more Yes, she does. She she's looks very streamlined. streamlined. She looks very streamlined. And she looks happy. Um, you know, even though she lost, she really looked happy. She and I was oh, no she didn't. She didn't. Was, she was I, mad. I was she, waiting she to see that Kerber met the meltdown that slumped shoulders. It did <laughs> it, but it didn't come as early as I thought it would. It came way down in the, you know, in, at the end of the match when she kind of just not really gave up, but she realized that she didn't really have any answers. But during the, the whole of the match, she herself was focused and engaged. So to me, that bodes well for Kerber going forward. And in her press conference, she said that this is something that she's working on, the aggression and in the moving forward. But before I, before I stop... Um, the WTA Insider um, shared a, a, an interview with Peck of that question that she asked Pekovic uh, about Kerber and um, and her game and you know what her chances are. And Pekovic said, you know, basically that Angie plays really well against lower ranked opponents, but when she meets a, as a rank or a sharp over a Serena, you know, her she didn't say weaknesses, but that's how I read it. Her weaknesses come to the fore, and we saw that against Azarenka because she did play well against everybody else. It's just that they don't have much with which to hurt her and she can do her whole shtick. But against Azarenka, she didn't really have many answers even though she tried, which I really have to commend her for that. <clears throat> I'm genuinely about to say something. Sorry. Well, you know, okay, Vika won a title. Good for you. And she, she stormed through the tournament. She did. She played well. She didn't drop a set. She was dropping bagels and breadsticks all over the place. And she looked good. However, she didn't have a lot of competition. And I want to see her play somebody who's going to truly challenge her. She didn't. And you can't... I don't want to take anything away from her from winning that, but I want to see... I don't think we're going to know where she truly is in her game until she plays some people that can truly push her. She... Well, that's that's so, totally fair, but that's what we wanted from Vika. We wanted Vika to vulture. All yeah, and she did. That, that is and, what I, I don't is. like that's this the key. whole. I don't like this whole scenario of Vika's back. We don't know if she's back. I mean, come on. Her fighting. Vika, 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 yeah, but Vika winning matches that she's supposed to win is actually a sort of Vika being somewhat the way back. I think you're right. right. We don't know if she's 100% back, but one of the things is like the losses that she took in um, you know, in tournaments that she would enter. No, yeah. I mean, those are some of those winnable matches that were like, listen, if you want to build up your ranking, and I guess she does, she is now. Cause what, she did now. Be, she moved up yeah, from the 20s. She's 17 now. Yeah, she's going to be up in that probably. And so, you know, and who knows, somebody else might withdraw, so she might get a top 16 seed. Right. So, you know, I think, I think we, I think the, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not like you. I'm not ready to do the Lindsay, hey, let's make her the second favorite. That seems way too soon. I'm for so me. not there. <laughs> 
But I'm, not I'm, I'm eager to see what she could do at the Australian Open. You and know, I'm eager to just see her, her not tennis. Nap. Though. Oh God, she gotta she <sighs> cut that shit out. <laughs> Go play your matches, do your thing, oh. win. We don't need some stupid. Excellent. How stupid is? How the stupid dapping. is that? Oh, the dapping is so oh. dumb. Like I can't. Oh yeah. 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 Oh. I have a about oh, it. Yeah. You know what? And I have a headache about it. Let me just say it right now. I have a headache about it as a person of color. I just do. I really do. I do. I do. I hate when like sort of quote unquote urban things make their way into these sort of like white spaces and then they become this kind of cool brownie points thing that you run. You well, win. I just, I don't, I don't want since it. Since you took it, it there, I have let me to take it, it a little bit. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, I'm sitting in my kitchen, the match is on, it was a replay. I had already known about the dap. It was the end. Jason Reed walks through the kitchen. And Vika's on court dapping, and he stopped. And he said, is she doing the dap? <laughs> I said, I didn't even look up, but I knew. I said, she is. He said, the white girl's doing the dap? <laughs> That's what he said. And I said, you know what? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> look, I mean, look, I, I, I just got to, for me, uh, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, but I would say, you know, for me, what I noticed about Vika this year, and I didn't, didn't see Vika last, is that homegirl reali realizes that she got a vulture. You can't, you're not gonna go, you're not gonna show up at the big event and somehow win majors. You got a vulture, okay? Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta make up your mind. You are a vulture. You've always been a vulture. You, you got used to the number one ascendancy, and then you know people step who, up who, the game. Who, and then, who are you calling a vulture? As a ranker. Really? Yes, I mean, like she's. Really? I mean, look. At this point, she has to be yeah. a vulture. She yeah. has to be a vulture. She's not number one in the world anymore. She has slipped. Exactly. She's totally she's a vulture. She's nowhere close to that. She, she was showing sure up to turn him in. She was showing sure up to turn him in last year, acting like if she was the fourth seed, <laughs> and we're not in Shenzhen. Okay. <laughs> Boo, you are not the number. She barely was seeded at most of the tournaments she played last year, except in the majors when it was 32 seeds. So she needed to step her game up, and she didn't do that last year. She complained about fitness and all this business and whatever the case. I think I would say she got fitter because she's wearing pants now, and she yeah. can't wear pum pum shorts when she's not fit. Stop. She knows that too. But hey, you know what? She, that picture that but, she posted on the beach jumping, she looked good. She definitely. Did you see that? I think I think that was the point. I think that was yeah, the point. Yeah, she was no like, feet. look at me. She I'm looks good. Again. Good I'll for her. Give her that. Yeah. Hey, the only time that I want to spend on Vika, though. Can we move on? Yeah. We can totally anyway, move on. I just got to say this. If Vika, you're my number one. I don't oh, want yeah, no damn thing. I don't <laughs> want no, none of this bullshit. No little, no bring the little kid on the court. This is just bullshit, okay? Child if services, I will be die. giving you a call. Play I tennis. will be giving you a call if I see another child on the court trying to be a mini Vika. Go, go, go read a book, okay? But Little girl, what? go this read is, a book. This though. is notorious. I do have to say, though, this is notorious, Vika's... Um, challenging season in terms of public relations. So I can understand the I movie mean, the Aussies have not traditionally enjoyed Vika. Even when she was very competitive no, they don't like and her. giving them great matches, they've really they've booed her, they've made fun of her noise. So I, I think the charm offensive is probably why it's happening there. So She's trying too hard. I just you know, just maybe just it's fall back much. a little. Just Yourself. fall back. We like exactly. you. We like you winning. Like That's you. it. Any real fan of Vika liked Vika when she was tough as nails and was just winning matches and like looking like she could throw down any minute. So yeah. <laughs> anyone don't yeah. forget to give me a phone okay. call to help you with your off the court attire because the girl <laughs> is still looking a hot mess. <laughs> moving on. What else moving did anyone on. watch? Who else watched it? Uh, what are the matches? No, Actually, oh, no, I, was, I have I to was, say, Reels, Reels, can I say I know you watch a lot of matches, but I really need to hear what Janina saw. Okay. What did you what see Janina? Did you Gina, you're being put on the spot. You're being put on the spot, on the spot. Janine. Yeah, the spot. Why, why are you doing this to me? You know what? Because, because I enjoy your point of view, and I want to know what you actually got a chance to see. It's a crazy time. So, did um, you see anyone interesting? I saw, well, <laughs> I saw Venus lose. I saw a little I bit. I didn't see, see, I didn't see it all. I'm going to tell you how it went down. I'm going to tell you how it went down for me. No, yes, we, Karen, the only thing we're gonna mention is that because she lost. So Karen, <laughs> rain it in, rain it in, girl. I saw it too. Tell us. Tell I, us I, the match, the match started. 
and I thought, all right, okay, <laughs> you know, I, I'm talking like when I say all right, okay, I'm totally talking like the first three points. <laughs> <laughs> and then she started struggling, and it was late, and I had to work the next day. And I watched the second game, and I said, "Oh shit, it's gonna it's, be a tough it's gonna day. be a tough day." Venus is not defending her title here. I don't even know who this girl is that she's playing, but she's probably gonna lose, and I'm gonna go to bed. So I did, and I woke up, and she lost. And I was just like, really? Really? You saw you know? like the shock that she lost. Yes. And then who did Crawford play? Was It was Crawford that beat her, right? No, 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 no. Who some, was it? Some, no, some, Crawford some played Russian. in Brisbane. Some oh. Russian, some Russian. I don't know. Whatever. So, you know, I watched that girl fizzle out next round. I did see that. And then it, that, that pisses me off. I am all for taking out somebody you're not supposed to win against. But back it up. Back well, it up. That girl did not win that match. Venus lost that match. So lost. Well, yeah, I went to bed. So That's I usually what happens, right? Yeah. When they don't back it up the next round, you usually kind of look at it and say, well, what did the what did the top tier opponent fail to do? Right. And that's when you kind of realize, all right. Right. Yeah, the goal uh, is to put, put balls back in the court. Venus had no business being in the back. You know what? Venus, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull you up one minute. You know, like... Venus, I don't know how the hell you've been playing in Auckland as the defending champion, two-time um, finalist, and you're preparing in Thailand. Girl, is your name Daniela Hantikova? Why are you in Thailand preparing for Auckland? Why? Flying in like you're some jet. You think it's a movie? You're you know not a movie star, boo. No, she, no, had an ex she had an exhibition. She had an exhibition. Look, Something. <laughs> Whenever you see Venus doing press door before a tournament. Venus is fine. We have to talk you know about what? Venus. We give let's, Venus all the love. But let's we say this about Venus. Venus, too. Venus what? looks great. She's fabulous, right? She is looking so good. I loved her kit. I loved mm -hmm. that funky skirt. Hair. She's got what's going on. She oh. seems to have lost her little pot belly a little bit. Oh, um, she she looks good. Look <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what. She played a turtle. <laughs> I will send you some lotion. <laughs> Do not go on court ever again with ashy knees. Ever. <laughs> you know better. Oh, and she did. And it oh, was so, no. so incredible. Janina is calling you and not repping our peeps well. <laughs> Man, I just, I was just like, am I seeing this right? Oh. Well, you know what it is? This is the only reason why you're noticing this is because Venus was losing. If you were noticing, <laughs> Venus was winning. I watched, I watched two and a half games. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Honest to like, goodness, I was so frustrated because Venus, like, she went down two breaks in the second set, okay? And um, and I actually wouldn't even want to say that the woman's, the, the, her opponent broke Venus. I'd like to say Venus broke herself. Broke herself. With, exactly. with horrible errors, right? That was really what was happening. And then she gets one back. And then she gets two, she gets two break boy chances to get back on serve and two unforced errors. On force, just Venus hitting the ball wildly, and I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Petra oh, Kitova take over. Yeah, a little bit. She got a little bit wild. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. A lot. <laughs> but you know what? From one, from one American to the other. I mean, like, what a strange world it is mm -hmm. when American women are winning tennis matches and they're not Williams. <laughs> they're not a Williams. It's odd. I have to say, Sloane. I I was so impressed by Sloane this year. Yes, girl. I gotta I, give you a clap and a two for that. I think it was her. This time around, her, her composure demeanor. and her demeanor is usually a detriment for people publicly. They're like Sloane doesn't get fired enough and up. But you know what happened was her calmness really helped her through the Thank sea you. of other players who were like angsty and intense and weird like Brody. She just looked at Brody and was like, I'm going to be able to take care of you. And she just calmly <laughs> chopped down that tree like she should. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I was like, okay. She's like, it, it, I never look, it never looked to me as if Sloan expected to lose that match. And I thought, whoa. She didn't, look, she didn't have that appearance. I mean, she served phenomenally. Yeah, she did. I mean, 
Wow, a massive serve. She had some aces, but just really good placement. Clarity and of the points the, and exactly what she Yes, did. she was executing well. She didn't, I mean, she still played defensively at times more than I would like, but when, when it was necessary, she did move in and dictated. Mm. And I was like, I was that just. That full hand cross court. Ooh, oh. she was, it was, I was, I was. It was beautiful. I only saw her play um, the final. I would have liked mm -hmm. to see her play Wozniacki, but that didn't happen. Oh, I, I, did, I did get to see the whole final, and it was good. She looked good. She looked yeah, she really, did. really good. Against Wozniacki? How did she look how damn did she, good? Yeah. Tell me, how did you turn around that 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 zero five deficit against Wozniacki? Because I didn't no, get to see that. Zero five. She was. She was. Yes, yeah, she was. Like no, no, no. I mean zero five in terms of matchup. She's never oh, beaten. Oh. Okay, when she came, I guess she was just like, um, my game is better than yours. That was exactly <laughs> what I saw when she came out there. My game is better than yours. I'm a better player than you. Well, then, like I told you, Caroline's over. looking for her dog. <laughs> and what was so funny is that Peter came down and called and talked to Wozniacki, and mm -hmm. Wozniacki, and they're smiling, and, and Sloan was there like, you know what, I'm good. My weave is right, my dress ain't so right, but you know what, I'm good. Murray, you can take a seat because I got this. Wozniacki broke her, she broke her right back. Can we so talk about Sloan's shit? She, and she, she won two, that matches twice. In her, two matches in one day. She got her shit together. She you know, pulled if, a Taylor if, Townsend. That's the only exactly. one I ever think about. That's winning matches, multiple <laughs> uh, matches in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to like talk about Sloan's kit real quick. Yes. Oh, yes, please. Um, <laughs> not having it. Not having it. No. I, mean, I okay. Yeah, this is this is how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. From the back, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then you get a side or a front view, and you see the hole, and it totally makes her body look off. Weird. Like off. Yeah. All her it, kits make her body look off. She Almost. has a stellar body, and somehow that cut around the stomach. Almost make makes her, her look pregnant. like she's got a gut, and she yeah. does yeah. not have a gut. You know what it is? Sloane has a very short torso. Yes. So when you have a short torso, you have to be very deliberate about how you drop the waist. She should and be wearing a line. First of all, yeah. you need to know where your yeah. waist is, and the waist can be under your breast. Yes. And this is what Sloane seems to be, be misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah. That well, anywhere below designer. your breast is your waist. Look, yeah. and the unfortunate thing is that she is. Personal, personally yeah. involved in the dressmaking process. That's what she And says. it is hideous. I don't like it. But do you know it what? Is. That's what happens with young people. You know how young people like a certain design, but it doesn't suit their body, but they like it, and they just stick to that? That's what happens with Sloan. Oh, you need a good Judy. All of her, you need a home girl no, to tell you that of, shit ain't cute. No, all of, her, all of her outfits have that particular cut, right? It's always a bit high yes. waisted, which you don't need. And I love the color, and I love the print, and I just wish it had been just a... I, wish, I want Venus to take her aside and say, I know design. Let me put something right? on you. Let me dress you, you, you girl. You, you need some pum pum shots. You need because some the truth shots. is, Sloan is beautiful. She yeah, is she so is. beautiful. I mean, she's just got like this skin the that you want to touch and see if it's as creamy as it looks. <laughs> but she got I mean, that dimple action. Beyond, yes, she is like this classic beauty. I know. You just want to stare at. I don't know if you've ever outfit. seen her in person, but she's, she's mesmerizing. Outside. Yeah, she's, she's very gorgeous. So and we I'm need her like, to up her better. dressing game. Yeah, dress her, girl, dress her better know. under armor. Dress and, her better and, under armor. Speaking yeah. of which, you know, people who are beautiful and need to dress back better on court, Svetlana. <laughs> Stop yourself. <laughs> I didn't see what Svetlana. <laughs> but isn't that part of her, like, that's part of her personality. I can't take it. Yeah. I can't <laughs> take it. She's a beautiful woman. <laughs> she's gorgeous. No. And then she steps on court in something that looks like cut off pajamas. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And I think Hello. that's her line as well, isn't it? Didn't she deny it? And I'm like, you're posting all these pictures on Instagram. Bitch is riding in a helicopter on Periscope, but she was blocking people, by the way. Hilarious. Hilarious. 
<laughs> but she looked great. She's got on headphones and her head back, and she's just, you know, chatting and showing people what she's flying over, and it was beautiful, and she looked beautiful. And then she somehow she steps on court, and she's so, ugh, on court. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, Spend you're my number one. Can wear. you represent Love. all the time? Oh my Love. God, I can't do athletic wear because she can only dress up. She can't dress down. I'm just saying, you know that. No, but she can. She's wearing her just grandmother's a closet. Uh, that my sister's closet. She be looking a hot mess. I can't. No. She does. But you know what? At least, at least her hair is right this time around because it's always crazy when her hair looking on hot mess and she's looking at the dresses that kid is a hot mess. So I actually like her best with short hair. But yeah. nobody whatever. wants to do that. But I um, mean so so we up. so we had some yeah. Sloan matches, we had some Vika matches. Any other matches that anybody saw that was on really the women's side? On the women's side, I guess, yeah. Oh yes, I did. I had the unfortunate um, <laughs> opportunity <laughs> The Ostapenko and Brody match. Aww. And before that drama, whatever. And I gotta say, Ostapenko, um, girl, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I can I, I make one insertion about Ostapenko for Karen's benefit? Ostapenko supposedly lists Serena Williams as her idol. FYI. Yeah. So, um, Ostapenko, yeah. Um, we'll have a <laughs> chat with Serena <laughs> and let her talk to you about the. Um, I, I guess we'll just call it the, the, the pernication or something like that for the serve. The, 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 <laughs> yes. Pronation. Yeah, it's serve. Pronation. 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 That's it. That, thank you. <laughs> Serena got a video up somewhere about it. Girl. <laughs> Try a serve, okay? As a matter of fact, I'm getting you a GoFundMe page. <laughs> I'm going to give you five cents for that. Girl, you cannot. You can, Look. You know, I'm glad England is all happy they got some blonde, tall, blonde girl to be like Brody. all happy about whatever the case to be. But, you know, um, should we talk about Brody now? Because, you know, I am, hmm, I got a burning testimony about Brody. Uh -oh. You know, and, but Asta Pinko, you can't be a double break at giving away matches. You, you can't be. In nearly two sets, you serve for the set, you serve <laughs> for the match twice. Had <laughs> set I, points I, and break points. points. Had match one. Girl, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Can we no. talk about? Can we, since we're talking about, can we? Hello. Uh oh, just a little bit. After yeah, the again, the screen. And I didn't think she threw her racket. No, no wait, wait, wait. Yeah. It looked like. I was watching the match when this happened. So this is what it's my take on it. The real take. So Brody hit a ground stroke winner, and she has some. Actually, she reminds me of Pliskova last year. You know, that big serving, just, you know, we either in or we're out. You know, the check, we either we're missing by a country mile or we're perfect. Mm -hmm. And this one time, Brody got the shot in, and Ostapenko went to run, and she she's a short girl, I think, yeah. Ostapenko is short. And she couldn't get to the ball, and I guess she sort of, like, the racket slipped out of her hand. She didn't, I don't think it was a throw. She didn't throw, no, it wasn't she, a throw was at all. It slipped out of her hand, I guess she went to take a swing or something like that. The yeah. racket flew out of her hand, hit the back of the coat. It did, and then land on the ball, kid. It it hit the back of the coat first, and then hit the ball, kid. In my opinion, and I think my opinion is the real true assessment. Brody did not <laughs> out of the match. I, that was exactly what, what it is. What because did Brody do? Point, I, I didn't hear you. What did you say? I think Brody didn't want to play the rest of the match because by then, Asta uh, Pinker was Oh, she wanted her, her defaulted. She uh. wanted her to default because she didn't want to continue playing the match. I uh. think she wanted that win just like that. Mm. And the umpire called her. She said Brody was just like, stop. I was just like, no, 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 no. She hit the ball, kid. She hit the ball, kid. And the umpire called <laughs> the ball, kid. And like, Are you okay? <laughs> and the umpire said, okay, fine. And nobody was, the thing about it, nobody was denying <laughs> that the ball kid was hit. That was <laughs> never the issue. So when she laid her cues, went up in Asta Pinko's face and was just like, you hit the ball kid, trust me. <laughs> Had that been me? Had that been me? I would have oh, pushed boy. her aside. I've been like, push her aside. Clap, push back. Push. clap back. <laughs> clap back. Clap back. I'd have been like this. Oh, I am not the one. <laughs> It was so because it, the issue of the matter is that if Asta Penko was not thrown out of the match, the issue does not lie with Asta Penko. Pick the fight with the umpire, pick exactly. the fight with the tournament supervisor. Asta Penko is not your enemy in this situation. 
So that, that's clearly showing me that she wanted Asta Pinker to get thrown out of the match, so she didn't have to play. And surprise, <laughs> surprise, you lost the next round to Sloane Stevens, who was who was there clocking both of you ladies. Sloane was there taking notes. She was. Who basically so let Brody fuss herself all up in a lather right, around but you know, but her. I loved it. It was like Sloane just watched her twirl around with <laughs> her energy. Like, I'm gonna get you! And so I mean, like, uh, <laughs> that was such... I mean, like, I don't want to use this word, but that was such that was such a low-class behavior from Brody. And then everyone got on about, you know, like, that was not... It, it was not cute. Everybody and then she, was ap- then she was happily uh, defended, I guess. because it, But it was interesting because Brody also has a very bad reputation, quote-unquote, on court. And so it was interesting to see I everyone heard, sort of find out no this moment. I yeah, to see... <laughs> yeah, I think it was interesting to see everyone line up. This was their moment to defend Brody and to defend <laughs> her and let her know that yeah! she was a Brit and that we loved her for being a real Brit. Except it was odd because then there were pictures of her and Ostapenko having practiced like a week ago before yeah, together. Yeah. I mean, chubby. I, 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 this is the thing. To, like, <laughs> I was like, whatever. <laughs> to make this a big deal. Because again, yeah, it's weird. Look, it's weird. I mean, it is true <laughs> that if you hit a, if you hit someone you're supposed to be defaulted. I think it's usually when it's intentional. Yeah, like, and I think I think the re- person, Gaske, the, the umpire judged right. that it wasn't, and so it was time for exactly. her to move on. Yeah. In the Gasquet instant, Gasquet intentionally hit the ball, and yeah. the ball and and the ball accidentally hit. Uh, and same thing for now. And you. same thing for now. Bandian, he kicked. He deliberately kicked that exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. It was and, deliberate. Yeah. So it was deliberate so action. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, the the racket hit the back of the court. Then first. landed <laughs> first. And it was fine. On. It was fine. And I mean, like, oh my god, I, I'm just like, girl. But it, but you, you know, know but he gave Brody a moment in the sun. Exactly. There was your that's 15 the question. minutes of fame, girl. Well, that was the question. The question is like, everyone's like, Brody, Brody, Brody. I'm like, where is this chick gonna throw up in Australian time? You know what I mean? It's like, where is it gonna be? You know, is she gonna make a deep run? Speaking of deep runs, um, how seriously should we take Crawford? Nah. nah. I mean, she does. She she is the person who won no, the no, American. No, she won no. the main. She Madison won the main draw. No, Madison no, she won the wild card. Does it better. Yeah. I'm just saying, Madison Keys does it better. Okay, Madison Keys is doing a better job of having I'm a big so wily errors. <laughs> it's just Madison Keys is doing it better. And um, Crawford, I mean, I don't want to be a shady bitch, but you know what people can say. It. But it's time for you to be proactive about proactive. Oh, okay, stop boo. it. Let's talk about our game. <laughs> Just saying. Just oh, saying. my God. No, no, no. You got to talk about our game first. But you know what I will Her say, game, though, um, She could do the same thing that Madison Keats did, which is that wonderful moment when you are feeling yourself and you don't have any pressure. Which is clearly what Crawford is, right? She's just happy to be there. This right. is a person she who is used to play in ITF, and she's got main she's got a main draw in the Australian Open. I personally think that with somebody with that big of a serve and a nice forehand like that, in early rounds, she should be able to get through, depending on who she lands across. I yeah, mean, I don't think Sarah she's going to have a deep run, but you know, if she gets a nice draw, I could see her doing. Going on a nice little pacing so run because, yeah, I, I, because I, she doesn't have anything. Yeah. That's well, I don't know. I mean, she might, she might, she might, if her, you know, everything depends on the draw. It's the draw, I mean, right? And and if she if she if she gets a pretty good draw and get draw somebody like a Zarina Diaz or yeah, someone a without a serve, someone, somebody who is without right. a serve that she can't because she was teeing off on Andrea Petkovic. Of so, course, you know, she she was doing that and she she's fearless. She's exactly. Really those fearless. two things are yeah, what I think things, can give yeah. her. So, yeah. you know, she's fearless and she's one of the things that kept her in Brisbane for so long was the fact that she came through qualifying. Yeah, she knew she, that place. She, yeah, she, so she she knows the courts. She knows she she she's assimilated to the environment and everything. And she's had to battle in in matches to get through qualifying. Um the open is a different and she was playing without a coach. Yep. She she had Madison Brengel as her coach. <laughs> Just and then, <laughs> and then hey after, girl. And then after Madison Brengel got outed, got lost and, and moved on to the next tournament, she was on her own. So you know that, See, that okay, tells I you take that about, back. That I tells take you that back about her mentality. Yeah, exactly. Madison Keys could yeah, never. She's tough. Yeah, could she's never. tough. And that's Madison what I'm saying. Keys I think if she 
if she, listen, we know how the WTA rolls. You don't know the person's game. That's the key. You don't know the person's game. They surprise you. They got a lot of fire and they have a self belief. That takes you far in the WTA initially. It can for a season. The start, you know what I mean? It can take you farther than you think it can. So um, anyone injury prone WTA for the moment, it's nice. So I mean, I'm curious. I'll see. I'm curious. I'm not gonna. I'm not penciling into the second week, but I'm curious to see what she does with her main draw ticket because she does have one. So. And she earned it. Yep, she earned it the hard way. She earned it the hard way. She had to go through lots of other people yep. to be able to get that wild card. Um, so, she, might, she might actually, I don't want to say third round because third round is a really big deal. At a yeah. Stand, you know, but yeah. get past the first round, yeah, probably lose to, depending on where she falls in the draw. Um, but, you know, she could draw the Australian Hope, you know, Gavrilova, who will probably give her a hard time, or the second Australian hope, Sam Stoser. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean, hey, oh. Sam Stoser would be perfect for That's her. That's a you buy, know girl. Samantha, that's, that's a, a proper. That's a buy. What, what? What's going on here? I feel lost. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> no, no, any no, other we, things you know, we need to talk about? You know, um. Francis. I mean, you know what? I, you know, I, this. I feel like this is symptomatic of what the year is going to be like because we had so, we we could, we could talk probably about the WT matches for another hour. Um, ATP matches not so special. <laughs> Let me just say, tonight, nothing happened over there really special. Let's hope Except that. For the, Except yeah, yeah. Sure. let's hope Chorich and Bedeni. I thought his name was Beden. For the I think it's Beden. Uh, no, it's Bedeni. Oh, they they uh, do Bedeni? Okay. Yeah. I was, I was like, well, okay. But hopefully those two people get their act, their act together and move up. Ooh. And you know who I did not see trying to vulture a tournament somewhere? Donald Young. Yeah. Did but he play? I, play? I don't he's think playing, he's playing. Auckland. I think he's playing Auckland. He's now playing Auckland. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna play. Is this his well, first you know, tournament of the year? Yes. Yeah. I will um, say though, well, can we just say how wonderful it must be for Stan to go to a tournament that he wins every year now, and that he also has his own personal. I hate to say it, Benoit Patsy. I mean, he gets Benoit in the semis. Poor Chorich is fighting out for three and a half hours and. Benoit just turns around and smacks his ass out at Stan and say, hit it, and it's over. <laughs> oh, um, you know what's funny? Um, so I'm watching the um, great thing. I'm watching Stan. the final this morning, and you know, so they, uh, the commentators are in of Indian descent. I'm almost sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they, they they queue into Stanley's box, and Donna wasn't there, but you know, Benoit is there. Donna, you better watch your man with Benoit. But anyway. <laughs> working the circuit. She's working the circuit, honey. She's got things to do. Uh, yeah, she just lost qualification in Sydney, so she. Oh, she, bummer. Um, a whole bar, I think it is. Anyway, um, so the commentator was looking at Benoit. So there, Benoit playing a brilliant player, you know, plays doubles. But you know what? It's a nightmare to coach. That's why he doesn't <laughs> have a coach. And I was just <laughs> like, Pick it. they Pick said it. that. Yes, oh wow! That, that that commentator had zero fucks to give that down. Like that right? Wow! <laughs> he was just like, see, that's must... that's the kind of commentating I like. I wish I would have heard that, man. That is <laughs> really very good. Like, tough. A Every now really and then, good talent. And they're, actually, they're actually really good commentators. Yes. But then you'd have to be watching Chennai. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, for me, um, but... and it was so good that you could tell that they already noticed the pattern. The player just was like, no, 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 no. What is he doing? <laughs> Like, <laughs> like you could have just like a brilliant shot, and they were equally um, complimentary for both players. Yeah. Whoever was on the court, and I really enjoyed that. They, they were actually, re you know, commentating on what each player was doing, you know, and you know, and you could definitely get a sense that you know, particularly I did enjoy the Bedene and the Chorich match because these were two two astronauts who were famous, two scrubs rather, you know, trying <laughs> to get themselves, you know, out of the that dishwash. I'm still here. Stick up in. Um, you know, we, we spoke about what's you know our our thoughts on whether Samantha Crawford would get far at the Australian Open. What about Sloan Stevens? Oh, definitely, Sloan, definitely. Oh if yes, she keeps, if yes, she keeps yes. if she keeps her new coach with her, 
that guy, it looks like he's probably going to hang around with her. I think he's very good for her, um, for keeping her calm and really understanding. I think maybe working with a young person like Sloane. Um, which, by the way, I'm just going to plug this. I put it on my Soli Tennis Travels Facebook page. There's a really nice um, interview with him that he wrote on tennis.com, and I shared it on my um, Facebook page for Soli Tennis Travels. He's a really wonderful guy, totally transforming tennis and um, youth tennis for African-American young people in Chicago. Really awesome. Um, <laughs> Mark, um, I, th I think it's Mar Murray. What's his name? Murray. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, let me find his full name for you. But yeah, it's just really, really wonderful stuff. Um, so hope you just check that out. I think you'll see why I think he's doing really well with Sloan. <laughs> um, as for the other matches, let me just say... Tell us about Dividal and why Dividal got his ass spanked. Look, look. Because he played uh, Novak? Okay. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm he struggled all be, week. He okay. struggled all week. Um, he, played he played people... It was like Basil all over again. You know, uh -huh. he played people who should have taken him down, but the struggle tennis really worked in his favor. It's Kamu Murray, by the way. You can't tell oh, okay, the, the commentators, <laughs> Sky Sports commentators and whatnot, tennis TV com. You can't tell them that David Alice playing struggle tennis. <laughs> you can't tell them that. They won't have any of it. So David Alice showed up for the 47th edition. And I just want to put a question out there. I'm expecting the fans to answer. Can we know? I mean, like, do the numbers may not support it, but I think we have to. If 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 Joker, you know, is redefining men tennis, can he redefine the term pigeon? Because I think right about now, Diva Dow has to be considered no less pigeon. No. There is no if fans about no. it. You know what? We, we won't the whole allow tour. it. No. We won't okay. allow it. All we right. won't allow okay. it. All right. <laughs> But let me tell you something. So Divadal came out, and that full hand first game, no less of in Divadal returning, that full hand was on like a boil con. I'm telling you, led Div um, Djokovic had to go back, and Divadal had a break point. He Ooh. had a break point, and then he was like, "I don't know what to do with it." And then I was like, "Divadal, girl, get your shit together. This is it. This is Christmas. This is Christmas, mother. Don't fuck it up." And he fucked it up. And then he never saw another break point ever again. But you know what? <laughs> Unless no, it was on his serve. Totally Unless it was on his serve. No, he Nole trolled all week, though. Nole looked like he was like everyone had a chance. You know, he kept saying that in his press conference. How people he had did. chances against him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, his shoulder. What's up? About, yeah. about his shoulder injured to his shoulder. Yes, Ooh. you know how Nole is always injured but still winning. Like, look, stop, 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 stop. Wait, wait. It's... When did Nole become Rafa? Look, is that his new narrative? Oh, shit. There's somebody it's stop it, and I do moment. not have that it's lie. It's a moment. It is. It's I like, don't, I'm, don't, I'm injured, no. but, I'm, but I'm winning no. at the same time, no. and I'm winning no, by no, no, atrocious no. lack of game. I quit. I can't have it. Look, that was not an injured man out there. I'm telling you. I There's know no that way. Vidal fans didn't watch the match, so if you're listening to this podcast, let me tell you, you missed the highlights, and I don't blame you. Okay. Nole was toying with Divadal. It was a he game. Won. It was won. a game. Listen, D Nole could have finished a lot of those points in three strokes. <laughs> uh -uh. But you know what? He was tiring Divadal out. He needed some batting Follow practice. Here. Let me see what you could do. Put it here. Let me see what you could do. You know what? I'm done with this. One, I got one word for you. Forehand <laughs> winner. I got one word for you. Backhand winner. Two words oh for my you. God. Backhand winner. It was, it, it was, in fact, I think, Janina, you pointed out, Nole had more winners in the first set than Divadal had won points. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, that's I'm done. Yeah, he had Look. more winners than, than Nadal had points. Oh, listen to me. You know oh, what? Listen we're to not, you. Why, why are we even talking about this? You know what? Good, oh, good for him. Good oh, for him. He's turning you know the Because, around you know what? And... I'll tell you this. I I, I mean, let me tell you why I have to say this. Because, you know, this is another instance where, you know, the tennis commentators and people talking about a matchup. I like it. Like, this is even oh. worse than the Serena um, Maria matchup. Because you know what? Serena is generous. You know what? She is vindictive. She's going to let Maria get a couple break points. She's going to even let Maria break her. <laughs> Only at the Olympics, because it was at Wimbledon, she had to prove a point. We all know that. That was 2004. She had to put Maria in her place. Plus, Chelsea Handler was in that commentary box back in a Russia, and she's an American. So, Serena had a 
prove that. Put then putting that aside, an Australia in 2007, that was something else. That was Serena comeback too. And I'm not even gonna talk about Miami in 2007. That to double breadstick. But come on, y'all know Serena be giving Maria a couple breaks, <laughs> give her a lead every now and once in a while. In fact, she even give her match points ever so often about 10 years ago. But you know, still they were match points. But Nole is rootless. And next time Nole meet Divadal, especially if it's on the regular tour, he's going to try to double bagel him. I'm Mark sure he is. Board, I'm he's sure he is. Try to double bagel him. Uncle Tony, um, Uncle Tony, it's time you do a Richard Williams. Get the fuck out of there when you see that no, shit. No, but you know what? I love it. The fan in the stands. The fan but, in the stands know, who offered to be. Yes. Oh, team. yes. I forgot that day. <laughs> Divadal was not having it. Divadal was just like, yo, what up, Divadal? It was a rough one. Rough one. Was but, you see, this is, but you know what, though? But, you know, good on Nole. Let me just say, let's just let's just continue the theme that we've been saying. Good on you for turning around that head-to-head. -head. I mean, Rafa's old, but, you know, I know you, we're supposed to still take it seriously because he's a legend, even though this is, not, <laughs> this is not the Rafa that any of us have ever seen ever. So... Anybody who wants a piece of Rafa's pie this year or last year, no like <laughs> is taking it for you. I mean, if Fonini is eating up, if Fonini <laughs> is, is banging that hard, it's eating oh, up God. that hard. Well, let me just say, I mean, on a serious uh, note, you know, because I know Diva Dow fans may be hating me now, but let me tell you something. And, you know, before one one on this, you know, the for real, for real, that Diva Dow did not bring a game plan. It's business he didn't change as usual. It up. He didn't, he change, didn't it change it up. And he wasn't, I think, that mindset that he, after he failed spectacularly in that first game when he was being more aggressive on the forehand, which I thought was not a bad tactic because you had a break point. Clearly, it was working. Yeah. I mean, no, they has fixed it. So, but I mean, Diva Dal, you fixed your forehand and forgot your fucking self somewhere because you got, you know, I think, got broken out of love the next game. <laughs> the yeah. game. I mean, like, shit. Like, so short balls. To, exactly. He did the same thing as the short balls, floundering way behind the baseline. That shit is not going to work when you cannot beat Nole from the baseline. You're, you're not going to. So that's the news on that one. Um, and, 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 and people, that's not hype this shit up anymore, okay? No. This oh, shit no, no. It's kind of like how we stopped. I, I mean, we, we need, and I think that's what's interesting. I think that's what's important for the ATP to understand that all of their traditional. Fidals and their Rafalos no longer exist. Though that era and that time is dead, so you can't over. keep hyping them up. They're over. It's over. Those matches, you know, the people who used to be on the other side, they've turned the corner on it. So put that to bed. And I quite like it. I quite like the fact that those things are actually dead in the water because I actually think they reflect what we've been saying all along that no one gives us credit for saying, which is that it's wonderful that Novak is at the as is is at his supreme best. It's just too bad his competitors are two legends who are past their peak, sadly, and a crippled generation that hasn't emerged to do much. Well, and has that's mentioned. it. So that's where we are. You know what I mean? Federer so I... talked about. Sorry, yeah. Federer yeah, talked about, and I, and I think it's something that I, I guess we can mention in with this is that okay. look, the problem that the ATP is having is that everybody has the same game style and just knowledge just way better than, than everybody else. And there faster, is nothing quicker. different. Yeah. Exactly. That literally. <laughs> That's what he's better than Nadal at now. He's just exactly. faster than he's playing Nadal's baseline game better because he's faster. He's fitter. He doesn't have knee problems. Most, exactly. Most I, I mean, these, yeah. These are things that that game requires, and Nadal is just not able to to do that anymore. That's and just, Nadal. That's what that is. If I may use your word, Nadal. You know, which I'm gonna take as my own. The um, Joker has a better tactitude. Dan <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. All right. Trust me. It is not cute. Do y'all want to I, I talk gotta, about Roger? Talk about slow code. Slow code. Just going to um, say that. I, you know code. what? I, I find, you know what? I have to say, I mean, I'm not at all. Listen, let's deal with the opposite of what happened. Novak Djokovic is injured, and yet he takes Rafa Nadal for, what, uh, three games? One more game, then you. Yeah, but you know the reality is, I was I kept being shocked that Federer was winning matches, and I think he kept being shocked that he was winning matches. I, he was I read sick. It. He's sick the whole week. He's like he's like sniveling on the court, coughing on the court. He looks like he's sweating out of fever, and so <laughs> I fully expected, I fully expected um his namesake to Grigor to take him out. 
you know, to have his moment in the sun, take Federer out, and he could barely do it. Uh, so when I saw that Federer was going to play Milos in the final, I fully, a hundred, I mean, set, maybe eighty percent believed that Milos was going to get that because that's what should happen. Federer was not a hundred percent, and Milos was playing pretty solid tennis. Ooh, in amazing. the normal universe, exactly. this result is what you should have. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah, it's like just not what people wanted to necessarily. Someone I don't said know if it's what people know. wanted, but you know what? This is what's realistic. Right. You can't right. be having these Much opponents up here telling me you're sick, and then you're running around on court. You've got like, like a, you got like an injured title. shoulder. Because I'll tell you what, I only on. saw the only time I saw Federer play was against Grigor, and he looked yeah. damn good. But then in the press conference, he's all you know sounding like I was sounding last <laughs> week, and I was like <laughs> thinking to myself. When he said all four kids were sick, I said, I feel you, baby, because that's why I'm sick. I've got two I mean, sick and, kids, and, and, and it's only a matter of time before mommy and daddy get it, and it sucks. And you, and you couldn't judge Federer by his Dami match, because let's be honest. I mean, Dominic team doesn't have a real serve, right? And no. so, you know, and, and, you know, and he has a pretty backhand, but, I mean, Federer just outplayed him. You know but you mean? know what? I liked so, what I saw from... Sure. I liked his fight back. Yeah, it was nice. And I liked that he didn't have, like, green hair or something. He looks yeah. like a completely different person. He looks like a normal, good-looking guy, minus <laughs> the the eyes that are, like, crab eyes. I, I, half thought, it was, I thought it was, I thought Brisbane for Federer was great. I thought, I thought him actually getting to a final, because I really thought he would withdraw at some point. I mean, not really. I never think Federer's Yeah, because he doesn't, he just but doesn't I, do that. I, I didn't think it was going to happen, but I just was like, wow, somebody's going to put this guy out of his misery, because he's clearly right. not feeling well. But, you know, he got to the final, and a young person... Oh, he was frustrated. In the final, it yeah, was like... Um, his a game wasn't said, on. I thought... It was so funny. A fan said, a fan said, Federer looked like Lee Vidal after the first game. When he... <laughs> 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 it's just like... Yeah. You know, it's true. It's yeah, really he said... He, in his presser, he said he was very frustrated. Like, things just weren't right. It exactly. It was almost like an well. alien... Took over yeah. his body. At one point, he just threw on the racket. Was just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? He threw his racket. Federer threw his racket. Yeah, he dropped it on the ball. Yeah. Wow. It wasn't, no, like, that, it, wasn't like full, it wasn't like a full thrown racket, but more like yeah, a drop on the ground. Like, you know, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. done. <laughs> I've had it. I mean, like he was putting himself in the right position, but the, he just wasn't executing. He was just either late. Too much, you know. Make he missed a couple easy ball. He was shanking. Um, Milos, I mean, I don't know if it's Carlos Moya effect already, but he was fucking up that backhand, which became a no hand for Federer today. I mean, like Milos was just. And I have to say, Milos, Milos, yo, well, probably hand. for Carlos. I mean, I mean, isn't that all the Spaniards ever do with Federer? That's what I said when right. when Reels and I discussed it earlier, because I I was sleeping, you know. I, <laughs> I said yesterday, what time does Federer play? 4 a.m. I was like, those days for me are over. I don't wake up anymore for tennis. I'm too fucking old. And I woke up around 5. And I felt kind of fresh. And I'm like, alright. So I checked the score and I saw he dropped the first set. I was like, uh-uh. And I really expected to wake up and see that he came back and won, not thinking about no. his illness or whatever. But I'm like, he should probably win that. But I'm so glad I didn't. But I was looking at the stats after, and I was like, well, he didn't. It doesn't look like he played poorly. I mean, it doesn't look like His it wasn't was, close. First of was not there at all. Yeah, he, he had like no missing. serve. You know, but he, he still no serve. served at 74% for the match. That's not bad. No, no. He won seventy four percent off his first serve. Oh, he only served fifty six percent. Never yeah, mind. <laughs> but you know, but again, you 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 always have to evaluate. It's still Milos. I mean, but Milos right. only Milos served at fifty seven percent. So yeah. I mean, oh, but, yeah, they're looking at it side it to was side. Not a good match. It was not yeah, a good match. Yeah, just last it didn't. Match was better. It didn't yeah, look like somebody played bad. exceptionally but, well and one didn't. That's what I was. Yeah, ironically, Milos played better last year. And lost and played worse this year and won. So no, actually, that's I what happens when you got four sick kids. I'm telling you, <laughs> take your lessons. Yeah. I, I do, I do, I think that Milos didn't have to raise his game. Yeah. Um, so much so, but I, I, I must say that I saw a marked improvement this year than I did last year, particularly on the full hand wing. It is definitely he's put in variety. He's moving better. Um, yeah, he's, he's definitely. Um, well, he's angles healthy. And that full hand. Yeah, he's healthy. I mean, like, yeah, but I think his injury only came later on after Brisbane, I think it was. I feel like last so, year he was injured in some way, shape, or form almost all year. 
But um, I was pretty, I was pretty impressed by his game. I'm looking to see what he's gonna do in Melbourne. What's that, Karen? Nilas had surgery last year. Yeah, that's yeah, what we had. Yeah. Yeah, he was all last year. Yeah, yeah, he was a he was a hot mess. He's you know what he's he's fortunate to be back where he is because everybody doesn't recover from things right. like that. So good but for you him. Know what? The good thing about Milos is Milos. I mean, this is my thing about these young boys, because I mean, again, can we talk about the disappointment that is and always continues to be suddenly um, for K? I mean, losing matches, uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> told you, told you, I, 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 told, I love I, K. I got all that ticket line. I got all that man with that line. I, know, I love K, but you know the thing that's really thing about the thing about K is that um, he still has the same problem that he always has, which is losing matches that are totally winnable. Um, yeah. and, no, you know what I mean. That, does, that doesn't sound, but it is. I mean, it's like there, well, there's no reason for K to lose to Benoit Pair. To I mean, yes, Bernard Tomic is playing uh, well. Maybe but I mean, Tomic are twins. No, I mean it's just they're just you just look at the day. Like, is a waste of space in my opinion. He has so much talent and he does so well. Like I, I did watch him in Milos play. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you fight so hard. To get you to play so break. well. You get to this tie break and you just fucking fade away. What's out. wrong with you? Yeah. And can we just talk a second about oh my god, does Australia hate him or what? I mean here you have a hometown guy coming out against a foreigner, not like he's playing another Australian, and they may as well have given him a golf clap. <laughs> well, I guess they're maybe they're that holding, crowd, they're holding on reserve to see how he does with those. Oh <laughs> shit! I felt bad for him. I was like, "This is your country. This is where you live. And this, is the, this is the greeting you get when you come out on court." Really, Tomic. Oh. It was horrible, horrible. Yeah, they, horrible. No, I mean, they weren't that engaged. They were. It was I mean, like they, they were, didn't they even know who he was. Yeah, that's weird. It was ugly, but that was a good match until the tie breaks. Yes, yeah. it was. It was. He played. I, I was actually surprised, and I mean, but, you know, I, was serving great. Tomic yes, was but serving night on a backhand, so you know. I just that? feel like every time I watch Bernie play, I'm like, "You're such a waste." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I well, you know what? This is um, the, you know what? This is the Bernie Summer. He's the opposite of Sam of Sam Soser. He likes to come alive down there. Right. So yeah. We'll see what he's gonna do. Maybe having like um competing with the Nick Curios because it seems like Nick Curios cares right now. You know so, what? Um, Watch that you know. little Hopman Cup. Watch it. Watch it propel him. Well, you know, he all was so excited. He, he was, was so excited so to win. I mean, I was like, dude, it's an EXO. But he does. really felt like you he know, was I so think it's going to be great for him. his first title. And as Martina Hingis said, Nobody I thought not how to win. So, <laughs> <laughs> you never know what can happen at a Hotman Cup. Hey, hey, all right, we Serena can move on. Let's move on to Cup lost last year and went on a Grand Slam here. Anyway, yeah. moving on to the gossip and the tidbits. What we love here, what we do so nice and real. So, ladies, what are we gonna deal with first? We got so much. Do we have so much? Yes, we do. We do. Okay. Clothing changes. Sponsorship changes. Okay. All right. Lacoste. You know. So. Um, okay. Um, Lacoste seems to be getting out of the tennis market. Bye. <laughs> 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 Bye, Felicia. It looks like no. the person who is represented by them, no, that, that the only high profile player that we can see right now is um, what's her name? Alize Alize Corne and yes. Subolkova. It's and Subolkova, yeah. Yes, but I, I would say it's kind of crazy because seeing that um Lacoste is a tennis player and <laughs> a former tennis player, the name, yeah. you know. But I mean, like Nike is a beast. Like he is just a beast, and well, oh, what they're vulturing. I mean, they're vulturing people because I mean, realistically, they've got to start adding to their staple. Yes, look off the big shoes. Yeah, I mean, and also just with Nike. I mean, I looked at some of the people they're giving sponsorships to, and I'm like, okay. I mean, I don't see this person doing anything, but I guess you got to have some baseline people. I'm thinking yeah. that Nike probably goes on the premise that. You you know the more people quality quantity over quality. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, that's 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 what it looks like. Um, and ASIC seems to be just trying to get into the market. And yeah. Honda Armour is doing know. some good job too. They're getting people. Hey, they have Murray. 
and the lovely, beautiful Burdick is no longer with H and M. He's, he's with not. Adidas. Step your game up, Burdick. Step your game up. I can't I mean, be mad I at guess you. He, I guess he makes more money, but I have to say, I think that H and M did something really fun. I mean, I know we always ended up talking about it. What we're going to not do is we're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about Burdick anymore because he's going to look like somebody it. else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's going to look like everybody else, and his game doesn't stand out. In enough for us to talk about him. So actually, the H and M thing was actually great because yeah. at least we'd always turn around and go, "What's British wearing?" Well, now I didn't even he, talk. I didn't talk about he, it at all. He, he got a lot of column entries. He got talked about totally. So you know, I mean, it's it's like H and M was like stand shorts for him. Right. You know? Totally. And you know what's crazy? I tweeted about um, British clothing change before he said anything. Burdich, get your PR people together. That ain't well, right. But you know what? That that's, right. that's just Adidas. He's just one of many now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's no longer <laughs> important. I mean, the exactly. development program being phased out, oh, one wonders why the switch. Well, did you also see that um, Jamila is no longer with um, um, Venus? Yeah. Venus. Yeah. yeah. Venus, I mean, what uh, happened? Fix that, girl. Fix that, okay? I'm curious about why. I mean, even because, you know, she did like a happy goodbye. Like, usually people don't tweet out, like, oh, and say, oh, I'm sad to go. They yeah, did. it's almost she like she's she said, fired. <laughs> yeah, it's like she's like, it's almost like she, she could still be there. I don't know. Or maybe they couldn't meet, they, they couldn't have a meeting of the minds about the money. I have no idea. But it didn't seem like it was a bad split. I mean, at least. Yeah, it was weird. Actually, Venus, fix that, girl. Fix that, Venus. Venus. There's something else I going think, on there. I think Jamila was the most high-profile player that was wearing 11. Yeah. Um, Venus, know, you don't need to take my... I was wearing it before. Yeah, I think more but, people on tour... What, I, I would I like more people to wear Venus's. I think 11, too. Yeah, I want more people to wear Venus's kit. I think yeah. that... I um, want more people to wear Venus's kit just for the simple fact that tennis should support tennis. Yeah, I mean they all support Maria Sharapova's bad candy. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> is Everybody hey, else can I, I, can I insert something really quick there about Maria Sharapova's bad candy? Because I just wanna, I wanna toot my own horn a little bit and tell y'all what a great mother I am. Okay, uh -huh. so just super quick. Yesterday, me and the little fellow were out shopping, and he saw this candy that he wanted, and. We were at Marshall's, so, you know, obviously it wasn't Sugar Pova, but he was like, Mom, can I get that? It's like that Sugar Pova that I like from the tennis <laughs> tournament. And I just started cracking up, and I'm like, most people don't have a fucking clue of what Sugar Pova is. I am doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And you need, you, need, you needed to have tweeted that to Maria Sharapova. And said, My <laughs> son demand right some Pova. And right? You, you might get it. You better get some candy. You would have gotten a retweet. Yeah, get it. Get it. Get it. Done. I want this damn but, you know, candy. Get some retweet. Can Venus. I, can we? Let, can let me we, just say, what? Venus with Jamila. Um, I don't have, I don't have any ill will to Jamila. Mm -hmm. So don't try to pick up for me, Venus, and you know, X because of Sam. Okay. Sam and I are good. Jamila <laughs> and I are good. Sam, Sam, Sam fix alone. that situation. Okay. <laughs> a little bit more serious though. I mean, this, this is this. It feels like this is pylon WTA moment a bit about um. You talk about like the Steve, the beginning of the season and the injuries and all of that. Oh, before you go, I have an announcement. I have a sponsorship announcement to make. What? What sponsorship? What? Tell me. WG Sorry. And Sex Education is is proud to present, you know, real tennis <laughs> fans. You know, just to let you know, people, if, just pull out, pull it out, okay? If things are fucking up, just pull out the pull out method. Is there. Where is this coming from? Thank you, oh, WTA oh. ladies. <laughs> We call this hey the juxtaposition in intersectionality. You like to call it hey WTA ladies and sex education coming together and when all of pulling out people pull it out and wrap it well, up. You know, somebody I think Christopher Clary tweeted, um Christopher Clary at the New York Times tweeted that there's only one person in the top ten who did not withdraw from a tournament this week. Yeah, crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> And that is Queen Vulture Angie Kerber. Do it, Kerber. I mean, everyone. No, I got this. I got this already. Everyone is so sick. It's Kerber. It's Kerber. Everyone is sick. No, I got. I, I got. No, I got. Was I got in the top ten? No, she pulled out already. That's what I'm saying. She, she pulled, pulled out, out though. Sydney? She pulled out oh. Sydney. Oh. oh. Yeah. yeah. She's oh. Out. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I thought. So she's basically trying to 
say that she's serious then. Yes. Well, you know, this is the interesting thing, right? Because we talk about these tournaments are back to back, right? They're back to back. And what it suggests to me is that a lot of these top 10 players lack belief, right, in their scheduling. Not so much that they're maybe injured. Some of them are legitimately uh-huh. injured. Like, um, but it's kind of this thing where I don't know if I'm going to get to the final. You mean to tell me that Aga didn't think she was going to get at least to the semis? Is yeah, that right. Draw? Do you know what I mean in Shenzhen? So it's like because that's, I mean, I remember, I think I remember an interview with Belinda Benchich sometime last year, and she was talking about how when you plan your schedule, you might have to begin to um, believe a little bit more in your ability to get farther in the, in the, in the tournaments so that your mapping out of the tournaments that you enter is more realistic. It seems to me I mean, that it was they... weird that Aga thought that she was not going to do well enough. Maybe that's the thing. She doesn't know, right? That's the question. It's the first couple tournaments of the season, so you don't know. But I would have anticipated that she would get at least to the semis or the final <laughs> <you know? laughs> and not they, be able to do a quick turnaround and come back again and get into another tournament. I mean, Sloan, her withdrawal doesn't surprise me too much because she just won a tournament. She, I'm sure she probably didn't think she was going to get into Auckland and win it. But it's just, you know. <laughs> they probably all just need to sit down and have a heart-to-heart with Mr. Federer about how to make their schedule for the year. Actually, you know, I've been listening about that. I think a lot of the players should do that. But I don't think they think of their relationship with fans in the same way that somebody who's been on tour as long as Federer has. True. Like, and we don't thing. have the flexibility that Federer yeah. has either to say, you know what, I don't feel like it, I ain't going. Plus, no, or just he doesn't get fined, though. You know, there's yeah. there's a difference there. Because he's been on tour so long, he doesn't get in trouble, so to speak, for not going places. But, I mean, for me, logistically, as, say, like a fan, I think the challenge with, with the WTA is to plan... It's to, ha- it's to know that fans may plan to see you at a tournament. So it's better to aim to, to be more realistic well, in your schedule so that, if, like, if I bought a ticket and I said I really wanted to see this person, I'd be mm-hmm. screwed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So a little bit of thinking but about But did you catch that Federer said he, he talks, that's why he puts his schedule out the way that he does? And I thought that was really nice that he said, you know, I don't, basically he said, I don't want to do that to my fans. I don't want them to assume that I'm going to be someplace because they think I should be, kind of, because, you know, that's what I typically play. And that's why he made his schedule so minimalistic this year with the option to add so that he doesn't have to pull away because he doesn't want to do that to the fans. And I just thought that was really nice. I just think it's a logistical issue that I think some of the... But, I mean, these are younger players, but that's fair. But I think for some players, I think they should... They may want to be a bit more mindful of their schedule because they do have fans who want to show up and see them. And so, you know, if I made a plan and took off work and was making sure I'm going to be at that tournament because you were listed on the entry list, you know what I mean? If it's a real entry, I get it. But those are just some of the things that um, I'm not going to bash the WT like I see people doing about it, but I just think it's, it's something to consider when putting together a calendar and releasing your schedule. Yeah. I agree. And also, well, a lot of the people, you know, who pulled out, you know, thank you, sex ed, um, they talked about, you know, actual injuries, you know, that it wasn't yeah. that, you know, a lot of them are really you know, injured. injured, you know, Halep was because they never got injury. to recover from last year because there's no break. Serena, but you know what, it's um, not so much that there's no break, it's that issue that came up last time, we were talking about how tennis doesn't give you breaks, you have to give yourself exactly. breaks. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the, all of the issues that they're talking about are chronic. Mm-hmm. And so it is interesting if you think about our top 10 players. Our top 10 players on the WTA side have chronic injuries. They are beat up. Yeah, Walking I mean, like, I, I, no, <laughs> like the, 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 association. Yeah, the Achilles, you know, because that's what I even asked. I was like, well, how does Simona know that she can play this week? Well, she can hit, but she can't run. Well, I was like, well, how is that <laughs> problem going to be solved How's soon? How's that really going to work out, girl? <laughs> Hope that they just give you junk balls up the middle for an entire so year, man. Not yeah, gonna work. I mean, it's really, it's really dicey. I think I think some of these players, and I think they're they're uh, around long enough now. I think some of these players may want to consider taking seasons out for me, for major injuries. Like if you have that's a chronic injury, I'm taking a significant. 
you know what the older generation did with Australia? They used to ignore Australia all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, but wouldn't you? But wouldn't enough you people did it exactly. that it didn't matter. You have yeah. to think about that, though. Enough people skipped big stuff that it didn't affect the rankings as much as it would now because they feel so obligated to be there. Well, let me yeah. just say, on the men's side, it won't make a goddamn difference. If <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not going to matter. It's not, it's not, Novak could probably skip this entire year and still be I'd number still be one. Number one. <laughs> well, where where is our where is our resident WTA expert? What she thinks about all this? Um, she stepped out. She stepped out. It's okay. Um, but, but I would say, you know, for the ladies, I mean, I, I I thought it was, you know, WTA. I mean, like we've seen this, like particularly end of last season. Anyway, people went around, so no, but um, why are we talking about WTA? I just want to introduce a little tiny new section. It might not happen every week, but you know, I'm gonna call it the clap back because I'm telling you, some people got on Twitter and got really feisty. Sarah Irani, she, she got did. a little test. <laughs> girl, <laughs> girl. She said, Sarah "How many Irani. draws are you gonna fuck up, you oh. dumb bitches?" I mean, that's basically what she said. <laughs> I don't translate from Italian perfectly, but that's what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> She's trying to give Maria the side eye and try to let her know. Oh, Sarah, come mm -hmm. on, girl. She did. She it took it there. But Sarah, I mean, like, if Maria is not in the draw, it means you can vulture. Why are you mad? Why are you mad? And you still true. lost anyway. Right? I don't know why That's you're mad. The thing. You still, you still <laughs> lost. And then we moving on to uh, my favorite was Lepchenko and Rene Stubbs. Oh. Yeah, what was that? That was so weird. <laughs> So, again, another one of those internet that I saw, unfortunately. I mean, no way. those are great, but... Wait. Gonna... Yeah. They, you don't realize she's pissed off because when you withdraw from the tournament and then a lucky loser comes in, then a lucky loser gets like a higher-ranked seedings good draw. True. That's why she's pissed. Oh, I see. I guess I never looked at it that mean? Way. Like, think about that. It's like it was the top two seeds, so now yeah. you ended up with cushy draws. <laughs> think about. It. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, because they don't because it's never too late at, at that, that point. Way. Yeah, you're, you're so smart. Because, we are so lucky to have you. <laughs> well, yeah. I was just thinking about it. I was like, like oh. get it too. Rock on, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Check you out, Mama. Yeah, well, the way the, well, the there's way the time, there's she a time probably line. would have had like her. She would have probably had a buy or something because she might have yeah. been the top seed. No, you're right. I did not think of that. <laughs> you, I, you know what? That makes a lot more sense. I just thought she was being a little Italian feisty woman because you know, we feel that Italian people are That's angry and that they have tempers. Yeah, and I'm like, ooh, took her to Twitter. I, I mean, I'm totally fine with people airing their business on Twitter. I love it. So what happened with Renee Stubbs? I saw some so, little kerfuffle. So, um, um, Magaruta. Uh, oh Mag yeah, Magaruta. Oh yeah, the Magaruta was playing. Um, another one who pulled out. You know, thanks, thanks, Ed. Pulled out against Lepchenko, and Lepchenko was playing pretty well against Gabi. Um, yeah. She was, you know, definitely getting her lens in. You know, like you know, perfect wrong strokes. You know, and she wasn't beating up herself, particularly in the tie break. You know, Gabi is as Gabi does. Either yeah. we're missing big, or we're on per more perfect. There's no in between. And I think at the start of the second set, she called the trainer before the second set started in the changeover in the break between. She called the trainer, and then I think she tried to walk, and then she eventually said to she she calls her by name. She said, "Vavane, I think her name is pronounced." She yeah. said, "You know, I can't play. You know, I'm mm -hmm. gonna retire." Vavara. Vavara, yes. Yeah. She she called her by first name, and she said, "I'm gonna retire." And you know, the coach came down. And you know, talk to her and Vavara, and they were talking. I think they high five. You know, said, "Good job for moving to the second round." You know, et cetera, et cetera. And apparently, Renee Sub thought that was in poor taste. Why? You know, to she celebrate? She said, "If you have something opponent, to say, an opponent, say an opponent is still on the court." That's oh, opponent. yeah. Say yeah. it privately. Say it. Later. No, 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 no. no. Stubbs got pissed. Off. Stubbs got um, took an aside to the fact that. <laughs> Uh, Lepchenko and her coach sort of like celebrated moving to the next round while Mogorutsa was still on the court. But you know how I feel about that, you know? Next round money is always better, better than this round money. And then nobody be mad at Lepchenko. I thought Rene was just like... Took so wait, it. so how did Rene find out? So Lepchenko told oh, Rene, Rene, or... I think Rene was commentating on the match, I believe. And oh, she and then she said, you should have told yeah. me this privately. Yeah, oh. and, and yeah, Lepchenko got on Twitter and just said, you know, girl... 
if you got something to say to me, you know, tell me to my face and Renee. Say it to me. my face. Okay. Meet me at the flagpole at three o'clock. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am ready. In the locker room. Mm. <laughs> in the locker room. I love. Listen to me. Yeah, you ain't gonna I throw am. no shade at me. From the locker room. That's gonna be and our next segment. Dubs. Stubbs, you look like you could handle your own, but I'm just saying Lepchenko got you, girl. I could see it right now. That lefty hook is going to put you down on the ground in two seconds flat. But Rene replied and said, you know, if I had seen you, I would have told you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I love that. That's the you best know, response. I, I, said, you know, I would have told Gavin the same thing, too, if she'd done it, too. But, I mean, to me, it was like, it was unnecessary. It was just like, um... It was, it was so a dumb, unnecessary call-out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a comment from Stubbs. And I think yeah. Lepchenko you did the right thing, okay? Like, you can't have someone calling you out in that manner, you know, like, saying it out loud like that. It's not cool. Just say, you know. So, I and think... And what about, though, um, what did Muguruza do? Yeah, she the, the original something. Muguruza comment is that Muguruza had an oh. interview, right? Yes, talking about Muguruza. Got Muguruza me. had a, She was in an interview. She said that, um, she suggested that the tour doesn't all like, members of the WTA tour do not all like each other. Right? That's what she explicitly yes. said. Yes. And, We're and not anybody friends. saying that they do that they're lying yep. and that they can't. <laughs> she said if they do their lying and into fact she said you can't be friends and then have to go out there and be competitors. Yep. I like you that. know what's so interesting? I just you know, I was catching up on tennis podcasts towards the end of the year and I listened to someone talk about that and I can't remember with a male tennis player, sorry, it's just escaped my mind. And I think he really made that point that at some point in time it just become oh no, it was actually the, the most famous wife on tour. It was um <laughs> Kelsey Anderson. And um, they were asking Kelsey if, you know, there's a lot of closeness between the wives and closeness even amongst the players. And I think she imparted that on some level it is an individual sport and you do sort of have to kind of maintain walls, both to kind of protect yourself and, um, and just to kind of keep things clear in your own head. So I, I think this idea that um, we need to present people as BFFs is so overrated. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I, I, don't, I didn't really take what Garbine said, Garbine said too strongly. I think that, I, I, you know, I, but I guess because it was the women's tour and something that people are always trying right. to kind of and the, the and, idea and that women are like bitches. But, right. but I, thought, I, think, I think that's really the mark of a champion. I mean... Lindsay Hi, wasn't best friends with Venus and Serena at the height of their fame. I mean, right, right. That's just, you know what I mean. I think that sometimes I think for a lot of women, I think it's, I think it's slightly self-protective to create well, a sort I mean, of wall uh, between you and your competitor so it doesn't get confusing for you mentally on the court. Sure. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think, I, well, it's kind of like you know, in, in whenever these conversations come up, I'm always reminded. Doha 2009, the two famous siblings in yeah. in tennis history, <laughs> and Venus, older sister, is whooping Serena, little sister's ass. Serena says, "Fuck you." Little sister turns around and calls big sister a bitch, yeah. <laughs> and almost refuses to shake her hand at the <laughs> So while we talk about you know the whole. No, thing. Wait. Oh, I always remember that that none of these women are friends. There's nothing that requires them to be friends. Be with friends. Each other. It's annoying. I work with people at my office. Yes. But everybody that I invite to my home is not everybody that invites me to their home. Well, I, I, I mean, that I have a meal with that I call a friend. You know, so if friendship is a is is. People no, I mean, own lives and see. Do you? Are you friendly with everybody that you break? With? No, I mean, I, I, that's not what I mean. I wasn't taken aback by. I, I think I was taken aback by two things really. One, the use of the word hate. I don't know if it's a bad translation or whatever that they hate each other. It probably I'm is not, a bad translation. I, I thought it was too strong of a word to think. I don't think that they hate each other. They may be indifferent, or they maybe have to have competitive mindset in order to play. But I mean that Venus, Serena. Um, example you use is that I don't I don't care if they're hating each other on the court, but I don't imagine that all the time that this translates to off the court as well. I think they, they these are the people that they see on a regular basis and they have to sort of work together, especially poor ones. You know, they gotta share spaces, <laughs> they gotta should be roommates. You know, so I I don't imagine, but I think what got to me that everyone took Gabby's comment 
so literal. Yeah. And she was like, yes, they all hate each other. And it's just a tour of cat fighting and whatever. And it turned into sort of like a sexist sort of thing. Even women were just like, yeah, this is true. You know, like they all hate each other. And yeah. No one is saying that they have to be best, best BFF. But I don't imagine that this, this, this WTA is any different from the ATP. I mean, apparently, Murray saying that everybody don't like Rosal is somehow different than Gabby saying that everybody don't like each other. You apparently, know, you know, some... because it's only one person. It's you one person. One person as opposed to characterizing the entire hear, tour. I didn't hear anybody, you know, disagree with Murray. Clap back on it. Exactly. You know, I just, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I thought what was really interesting was how all the WTA players seemed to want to. I mean, it was, I mean, it's that was interesting to see. From distance themselves from that claim, yeah. which I think was interesting because maybe they were thinking to themselves that this is gonna like it's bad PR for the tour to right. suggest it, it, that. Right. But again, you know, again, not understanding PR, uh, it's not bad PR for the tour to say that y'all ate each other. It really is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, trust me, the reason why the Maria and Serena tickets is selling is not because of the tennis. <laughs> like, y'all no. It's really not. not. It's really not the tennis people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tennis. Even but, if, even if the, even if the fight isn't real between the players, as long as it's real between the fans, that's all you need. That's it's all that matters. All really it's all a big PR hoopla. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A little bit of that energy. You know, it's interesting. I will say that one of our listeners actually reached out to me via Twitter and was talking me through to this idea that we toss out there about um, Novak Djokovic and um, and sort of embracing his kind of villainous role and and um, and how and he then made the point, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. He's like, well, you know, if it was an American or a British person who was having Novak Djokovic's year or even his um, resume, he'd be anointed as the, the best thing since sliced bread. And so you have to understand that there must be some Eastern European bias at play with Novak. Yeah, it's and clearly. I said, well, <laughs> yes, clearly. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm willing to admit that there very well may be that sort of uh, angst, <laughs> which I thought was wonderful. He was very complimentary, he or she was very complimentary about our podcast and was saying that. So I thought that was really interesting feedback that people <laughs> first they were listening and then they were trying to find us on Twitter to tell us what they think about it. But, you know, this is sort of the same thing. It's like, listen, sometimes PR is accidental. You know, it's the whatever is the thing right. that sort of generates interest. I don't know. Sometimes well, you might have to think about embracing whole, it a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's that whole cliche that there's no bad press. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I mean, in in there's tennis, no, it might be helpful no, to get any. No bad press. Why is it that you know Nova doesn't embrace? You know, doesn't want any. Doesn't embrace the bad side. Because he has to embrace, you know, the idea that you know, like he's they're trying to go to the federal model. Yeah, as opposed to creating his own, own, his own. Yeah, I mean, they, they're they're trying to recreate that, and it can't work. And Nadal is a single man, you know, and that doesn't. He can't have the Playboy status too. There was a time. Him. There was a time when Nadal tried that. Remember when he was like the Bacardi guy. And he didn't fully go there. I wish he had a had. But Nadal done is too. anti-social. He doesn't do well in social <laughs> setting. I don't know how people can't see that. Even when he's winning, he looks uncomfortable as fuck. But you know what? I'm I not trying to be like hater. Here. No, no. I would have liked Nadal to embrace more of the sort of Bacardi rhythm of life. I'm dressing in my underwear image. I don't care. I mean, I just and I think all of this is kind of fun. The PR stuff around you, I think, is sort of fun. It's not really you. So if you have fun with it, I think it could be really good for the tour. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Why not, right? <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine the the commentary in the booth if we actually had a number one who was a bad boy? Oh, my God. I mean, we had so Ivan Lendl. Oh wasn't so, he, um, no, but, not a, saw, but a real what, bad boy. We saw a real bad boy. we had a bad boy in, in Nick Kyrgios last summer. But they can't deal with it. They don't know what to do with one of those. And it's not even like he's going to get arrested. That's but it's like... funny. Exactly. It's funny that it's the like... play... you see people get up in arms over Bernie Tomic having a mock shot. I mean... Well, you know, let's talk about PR for a quick second and mentioning that, you know, Grigor Dimitrov is doing the best he can by <laughs> aligning himself with <laughs> another <laughs> one. <laughs> Federer at 24 with his grand slams and Grigor at 24 with his grand slams. So I think I think, I think, I think, is, I think is trying to pick up the slack. Look, <laughs> I'm just going to say this. 
And I'm going to be very, very politically correct. I'm going to say very politically correct here. Um, Gregor, boo, I really think you're trapped in the closet. I get it. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I mean, because the type of women that you seem to be attracting, and I'm sorry, there is just nothing special about you that make me think that you know that you are that good, that suave. I think you're calculated, you know? You're calculated. You know, you're very calculated and you're picking he certain kind of women. Power. He likes powerful and high profile women. What's wrong with Look, that? Are they because, powerful and high profile? But you know what? They're a certain type. They're certain type. But you know what? You know what, boo? Your resume doesn't match up. I know. So you end it up does. looking like a little play, a little exactly. play thing. Keep looking like an accessory, boo. You're looking like a pocketbook. <laughs> And that ain't cute. Maybe you're a, you're a afternoon Maybe work clutch. The gigolo. Look, I don't he's not even suave enough to be a gigolo. The gigolo would never really work, no. though. I don't like no. that as a. It doesn't work as a as a um as a as a as a type, right? Look. I mean, the gigolo suggests that you're sort of a man about town. This one says it's like a puppy dog. It doesn't. Quite just, <laughs> and he is <laughs> so catchy. It's just the way. It's the same scenarios. We're going out shopping. We're holding hands. Public of display of affection. Hey, the same like shit with Maria. Hold up. Every yeah. man, every woman Look. wants a man who is suave. A puppy? A swab. <laughs> a lap dog? Someone who is art. Who, who, who can go shopping and hold the bag. And who look damn good beside me. I, mean, I don't. Just... I never. You know, it's so funny. And I'm so, so horrible. Maybe that's actually quite sexist of me. I don't find it attractive when men do it. And I certainly don't find it attractive when women do it. That doesn't work for me. The whole cougar thing. On either side, it doesn't do it hey, for I'm me. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. No, I'm just wondering though. You know what I mean? It never worked because I was like, dude. I don't yeah. know who is your PR manager, um, <laughs> um, Dimitri. Uh, but with, you know what? Your PR team. Mm -mm, no. Oh, he is. No, we have to tell Tony to take care of that. Tony, God yeah. sake. He's contact. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Dimitrov, Dimitrov. You see, because you see, what's gonna happen, Dimitrov? Is here's the situation. <laughs> you you are playing this, you know, like I'm a ladies man thing too far because when you get when you get pushed way. out of the closet, it's gonna be hard to backtrack all of that shit. <laughs> oh, you gotta, you gotta, no, you gotta be silent. You, you gotta play like an Ian Thorpe kinda, you know. Study Ian Thorpe playbook. You know what? No, if you wanna no. get money, I'm trying to tell you. I gave Monfi some advice last year and I'm giving you some advice now. Oh, dear. Reels has make it everyone big in the closet. He does. You have made a big splash. Reels, Reels, your closet is too full. <laughs> well, because what people imagine is a closet is actually a glass box. Well, oh my god. I, I said I was trying to be politically correct. Yes, you got too many people in the closet. <laughs> Reels. Y'all don't try to tell me Sam is not trapped in the closet, okay? Yes. I mean, I, Actually, he's not because Sam okay. and I have a thing going on okay. in my mind. But okay. All right. I'm going to okay. tell you what, tell you what we're going to talk Trump. about. We're going to roll this Dimitri around. Trump, yeah. You are not. You're acting like an afternoon after work clutch, okay? You're not a high price handbag. <laughs> oh you are not. Oh you're a cheap you are mean. Cut him off. Like, Cut him off. You have meanie pants. Listen. Cut him off. Go ahead. Let me, let me tell you something. All right. I'm done. Oh. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Zip it. Okay. All right, this is what we're going to talk about, and then we're going to wrap this up. Olympic drama? No. No. We'll wait. We'll save that. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about that. We're going to talk about our dear friend, Ben Rothenberg. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Are you ready to go in there? What are you calling Ben out about? What are you calling Ben out about? And I want to say that I, did, I am not throwing shade because I did call him out to him and had a brief conversation <laughs> with him on Twitter. Just so y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The lovely Just Ben context. was in a Federer's press conference, and, and people were asking Fed about the possibility of Murray missing the Australian Open should Kim give birth. People so, are just bad. <laughs> Someone else, not just okay. Ben. Someone else asked this. So Federer's talking about it, whatever. And Ben thought it appropriate 
interesting, whatever, to ask <laughs> Federer if he and Mirka planned their pregnancies to not interfere with slams. And I heard him say this, and I said, did that just really happen? Are you asking them if they planned their sex capades <laughs> so that she doesn't give birth while he's in a slam? Federer's response kind of hard. was kind of this weird look, and he says, I don't think so. I don't really remember. <laughs> The but, circumstances of the sex nine months right? with my children. <laughs> but it was great because, you know, Federer can throw shade in a way that nobody else can. It's like it's like he can tell somebody off and they don't even know it happened. And his response was, you know, there's more to life than tennis. <laughs> he said, slams aren't everything. It's okay to miss a slam every once in a while. And he said... The big things in life are your family and everything you know outside of tennis. And I was like, well, well on you, Mr. Federer. So I'm listening to this, and I tweet to Ben. I said, I mean, seriously, what are you thinking? His response, because, again, this is Ben, and we love him, says, this could be in reference to so many things. <laughs> So I gently remind him that he asked Federer if he and Mirka plan their pregnancies so the births don't come during a slam. And he says, the people need to know. And you know what? The people do. You know why? Because he wrote an entire article about the New York Times about it. I can't. Yeah. It was interesting, though. I mean, it was, I mean, well, as interesting as these things can be, but it was basically right? an article about, um, <laughs> it was basically an interview, it was, um, it was basically a, um, an article talking about fathers and being there for their um, their um, their wives or girlfriends when they're giving birth. I'm not ben wrote sure this article? That. Yeah. It was, it just okay, came well, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to cut you off right there. <laughs> and I'm going to say that clearly, and this is not an assumption, I do know Ben personally, is not a father. <laughs> has no idea what it's like to witness the birth of your child and what your priorities should be. So stop talking about shit you don't know. No, I think, no, it was an interesting article. I guess it was just more just like, you know, what it, I mean, one of them was really, really key because it was like basically somebody had made it to a final and actually ended up having to withdraw because his wife went into early labor and, mm -hmm. he, and he defaulted really and that mm -hmm. cost him $40,000. I mean, that's big. So it it's, but, but it's like anything in life. I mean, there are lots of poor people who can't run around and see the birth of their kids because we all make, make choices every day. We all have to do those things. So, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, he said he wouldn't trade it. But I was thinking to myself, that forty thousand dollars would have come out mighty handy. Maybe somebody could have videotaped that baby coming yeah. out. Green. <gasps> <gasps> that Gilles Simon, you know, basically tanked his match at the U.S. Open a few years ago just to run home because his wife had given birth and he wasn't able to make. Be yeah, he found out the night before the match, so he was yeah. fine losing. But I mean, it was int listen. That's an int listen. How often do you get it? You get forty thousand dollars. That 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 that's like a lot of diapers. So I mean, those are choices. You witnessed the birth of a child. someone, someone who has given birth and didn't have the father there to witness that birth, it wasn't father wasn't around to witness certain aspects of my child's life, I know he regrets it now. It's regrettable, but it's also it's uh, also coming it's also coming no, listen, it's it's regrettable but it's also a privileged position, people. There are a lot of people who don't have to um, it's not a privileged it's position. It's privileged I'm gonna tell for you money. What, I'm you, gonna tell you if something. You have to live and work in a foreign country and you can't get home because you can't afford to get home for certain sure. things. Those are things that happen. Yes, it, but it, you it better happens. believe. That, you that better believe. Extreme, that's the extreme way of thinking. It's not if. extreme for tennis players because that was no, no. What, exactly what happened with that person. He was in a foreign country and he had the to woman, make it home. The woman will never. Yeah, I'm just telling you something. I don't care if we never hear about it ever. If Andy misses the birth of his child. Oh. Gonna, he ain't though. ever gonna hear the end of that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing for him. I mean, he's got a fucking bank account that allows that. If he missed the birth of his kids and he has money to afford getting home, that's 
So you're telling, you're telling me, you know you're kid. telling me that Andy Murray, who has made two Australian Open finals and Three. never raised a trophy, who Three. is halfway there to a career Grand Slam, if he gets to the final of the Australian Open and he hears that his wife is about to give birth or is he's in labor, he's he's going to believe it. Yeah, well, that's, what, that's that. what he oh, says. Oh, oh, look, hold, he on, says. hold on, hold on, hold on. And he should. Austria Hold on, wait a minute. Australia, because life is bigger than tennis. This is your child. These are your children. <laughs> Australia is not like in, in not close to England. I imagine if he gets. I don't care. And you know, like he can't. I mean, it's gonna take him what twenty <laughs> hours to get there anyway. I'm well, sometimes actually, labor can last seventy hours. Well, you know, you, you just know have what? to you I'm have to think about it logistically. It has to be planned well because if she goes into labor the morning you're supposed to start the final and you're not going to make it home, you may as well. I don't stay. think anyone. Will. No, 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 no. Then what's no, the point? No, you're going to lose no, anyway. No, no, <laughs> no. The point is, this is your family. This is your wife. This is the birth like of that. not only your child; it is your first child. You never right. get that back, no matter what. And I'm telling you, his ass better be on that plane at least, and trying to get. He may miss it. He may miss it, but he better be trying to get his ass there. Because I think him gonna whip his ass in shape. Listen, and these are the reasons why I don't have no trick, no child, as my mom says. Because I'm gonna be like, it's okay. Um, but you know, no, you're not. I don't know. Kim got honestly, a mouth and you know I Kim is going to tell Andy. You know, I, I know myself well enough to know that I'm going to slam. You ain't nobody. You ain't no big four. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you get your <laughs> ass here and you hold up exactly. my leg. Exactly. No, I mean, but that's okay. I mean, I know myself well enough. No, that wouldn't happen to me. But I think it's cool. I think it's really great. I think it's interesting that it's become a story. Um, <laughs> I think it is such a story that does not need to be have. And I it have just made me laugh. I and I am telling you that this question Child would not be proposed by someone who is a parent. Is Charlie brand new? It is. Is, is, is it is father you, brand new? Is, it is, is a new concept? No, it is, people. Do you read about poor people's lives? It's a real question. For poor people, poor people make these choices all the time. We are talking about tennis and Andy Murray. Exactly. But but, I mean, a... yeah. So it's not a story, but I mean, it's still it's a valid oh issue. Oh my God! Are we that dismissive? But <laughs> a lot of poor people do. Fathers, when they <coughs> want to, they can be there. I can't imagine a boss is going to tell a poor man, the custodian. Hey, mister, you got to clean up the fucking flows because I don't Listen, give a shit about your baby. They basically kick you out when you have your baby in the U.S. anyway. You're lucky if you spend a night. I'm right. Sorry. You know what? That is true. That's All right. right. All but right. You know Anyway, so no. All right. We're not being do we have we're a bomb or anything? anything? I just no, think it's a fun. big deal for rich people to decide that they're gonna leave something that they're doing and run home to their wives. I don't get. That. I mean, personally, oh man, I keep my mouth shut. I've already done. Anyway, we're gonna end on this note, ladies. So, the Powerball. I'm sorry, Karen. And well, actually, you probably got a friend who can you do it, Karen? Can you do the Powerball? Oh no, but I Powerball? have family that side of the Atlantic, so. We should oh. go girl, they win, you win. They won't send you no money. You better hope I win, okay? <laughs> I'm watching a so family. Family is gonna be anyway. All right, so, what's oh, your what's your tennis, tennis lottery tennis. dream? It, it's a billion. It's over a billion dollars now. One point three is. billion dollars on Wednesday. If you win, what do you do? Go real. Okay, so I think I am going to take a lump sum. Oh so, yeah, you do have that taxes, option. Uh, if it's after taxes, I imagine I'm gonna get at least five million dollars, five hundred okay. million dollars, right? Five hundred million, I think. At okay. least I think so. And uh, invest half of that money. I have to get a real job because my mom already told me I don't want any of your lottery money. But you know, she might be singing a different tune when she see me coming in my Versace Gucci <laughs> in my lap. My <laughs> uh, you know, I buy me Downtown Abbey, okay? I am buying me Downtown Abbey, okay? <laughs> no. But you know what, ladies? You know, we are going to the Grand Slam in fine style. We're going up in Rio. We are getting a boot. We're going to buy out a whole box. <laughs> and you know what? I don't want to say it this way, but you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bring class and you know culture to Wimbledon. We will be okay. We're gonna bring that wine we're gonna bring that wine train. 
come to Wimbledon. Hey. <laughs> all those ladies in white train, they got to come to Wimbledon. We're giving them out. Oh, that's you know, right. I'm, I'm all right. All right. <laughs> Andrine, what are you doing? What's your tennis dream if you win the lottery? My tennis dream really is um, box seats at Wimbledon. I will do box nice. seats at Wimbledon. I think that's just too damn good to pass up. And okay. um, it's not worth I'm it. Not watching, I'm, not, I'm not watching Feder. I'm not watching Nole and Nadal. I'm not watching that. <laughs> well, <laughs> nah. You well, can go eat that. strawberries and well, cream you know during that The good that thing about having that money is that I can actually wait to see who gets in the final and buy that ticket. <laughs> that day. Is true. Actually, this I'm going to put a cardboard <laughs> cutout of me there saying, this is me knowing exactly what happened. I Karen, Karen, what's your lottery dream? I, I, I've, I've always wanted to start. Um, I, I grew up in the ghettos of Kingston in Jamaica. And I've always thought that, you know, after hearing about Venus and Serene, I've always thought if I had money, I would buy a huge plot of land and start a tennis academy in my home country. Mm, look That'd at be you, nice. Mama yeah. Jamaican girl. Yes. That's nice. I love it. Free of cost, everybody would be able to come and play, and it would be a crime-free zone, a gun-free zone. Yeah, one of those promise mm. zones. One of those areas where children can come and play safely and just have a really good time. Nice. And on a personal level, I would quit my freaking job. <laughs> and oh and my god, god. I'd quit like the best. I'm gonna get a bitch about it. I'm gonna get a bitch about it. I'm gonna be fuck you, Ben. Fuck you, Bob. Fuck you, Bob. You know what? Ben, and I'm calling out yet again, motherfucking HR. What you gonna say about that? <laughs> right, as soon as, as, soon as I knew that I had one and it was confirmed. I would just get up and I would leave all the filing. Oh, shit. I just don't even show up. I've got that bitch about it. I swear. I'm not going to lie. I just don't even show up. Andrew, I'm just not going back. I'm not going in. I'm going to send a letter. I'm going to send a letter from Australia. I don't. I. I, Oh, oh, sorry. This is where I've been. Shenzhen. I've been. I'll be at at these tournaments and I'll take selfies and I'm like, this is me. You're going to be a WT stalker. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what you okay, so if I, if I win the lottery, I want to follow the entire tour for a year. I'm doing, oh, I'm doing it big. I yeah. want to do it all, and I'm taking all of you with me. And if, yeah. and if I like you on Twitter, you can come too. Um, if I don't, you know what? Watch my timeline. <laughs> okay. I ain't trying to oh, share wow. your money with the a bunch of strangers, okay? Back. I'm not trying no. to show you money with a bunch Wait, of strangers. This, I'm this sorry. season is back because we've had one of our longest podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, get your Powerball tickets for Wednesday. One point oh. three billion dollars. Remember me when you win. <laughs> I want you know the whole you, tour. Damn it! Wins, please just give us some sponsorship money. You know, give yeah, us some just money. Yeah, sponsor us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, Upgrade dear. us and get us a mic. You know, we don't want to be on TV just yet, but you can put that money in a seed account. You know, a seed <laughs> <somewhere. You know? laughs> But we will take Olympics, Wimbledon, and French <laughs> Open tickets. I know I was. Yeah, I don't think I want to go to Australia, maybe because I don't. I'm not excited about that plane ride. But no, it's hot. Mm -mm. It's I can hot. handle okay. that. Let's cut it. <laughs> All right. Okay. And next guys, time. Comment impressions, you know, and tweet us below. You know, we always add us, you know. And all my new followers, I want to thank you all very much, you know. Nobody following you. <laughs> Don't come for me as we're leaving, okay? Don't come for me. <laughs> ciao. Good night, good day, ciao. Bye.